Back at Tiger Stadium, we had ourselves a nice little flyover just moments ago. And a good look at the LSU Tigers taking the field as they get ready to square off against the Vandals of Idaho. Beautiful night in Tiger Stadium. Partly cloudy, 85 degrees, a little bit of humidity in the air, and just a little bit of wind blowing, a chance of rain. As they like to say here in Death Valley, never. Take a look at the series history. Just one prior meeting between these two schools. LSU leading the series 1-0. They met back in 1998 right here in Death Valley. LSU a 53-20 victor in that previous meeting. Some keys to the game tonight. Renee Nato, what do both teams need to do? The Vandals need to protect the passer. They're already allowed six sacks. Defense will have to take some chances and try to make LSU one-dimensional. Special teams need to be an ally of Idaho with a big return or a key stop. Just like that. Idaho has won the toss. They will elect to receive. LSU uh, keys for the game, Renee? Yes, Les Miles, 88% success ratio in Tiger Stadium. Offense, balance, and consistency. Five drops last week. Can't have that again. They must continue the pressure on the quarterback and tackle well. Four sacks thus far. And special teams, big effort out of bread wing and a key return or a key stop to help the offense. Take a look at the Idaho coach, Rob Akey, in his sixth season at the helm for the Vandals. You see the career record, although in 2008, his team did win the Humanitarian Bowl. And on the other sideline, Les Miles, eighth season at the helm for the LSU Tigers, 77 and 18, got a national championship, SEC titles under his belt, and of course 29 and 0 in non-conference regular season games. The Tigers, as we mentioned uh, during the pregame show, we talked to Les Miles about it. Not really putting a lot of focus on the possibility of an NCAA or an LSU record here tonight. Yeah, you know, you just want to take one play at a time, one series at a time, want to improve from the second week to the third week, and hopefully not come out of, with any injuries and get a lot of players in some experience as they move on to Auburn next week in the SEC. Beltung and Bass deep to return the opening kickoff tonight. And it'll be off the foot of James Hairston, the kickoff specialist for the Tigers of LSU. A sea of purple and gold on hand here. And definitely the biggest crowd that the Vandals will play in front of this year, although in years past they've played in front of some uh, pretty good-sized crowds as well, Renee. Auburn, USC, some other places, but a different kind of venue here at Tiger Stadium. And we're underway in Tiger Stadium. This one is kicked out of the end zone, no return. So Idaho will have its first possession of the game and begin at their own 20-yard line. Good look right there at the former Weber State defensive end, Rob Akey. But, uh, you know, big, big uh, quarterback, Dominique Blackman, 6'5", 254, a good size, kind of a jumbo size junior quarterback. Uh, 352 yards, 81%. So far on a touchdown, he's... Uh, Doing pretty good. He's got a big time arm, but he can throw the touch pass and got a little bit of a history. We'll talk about it a little bit later. Got his first career start last week uh, against Bowling Green in a hotly contested game. And you see the numbers completing 81% of his passes. He looks to throw on first down and does to the near side, complete across the 35 and to about the 37 yard line is Michael Legrone. Take a look at our starting lineups for Idaho. Bass, Belting, Lovett, Scott, and Legrone, who just made the reception there. Elen, Smolga, Marbo, Jones, and Johnson across the offensive front. Marbo's a good one. And after a gain of seven. 17, I should say. It is first and 10 at the 37-yard line. Passing on second down, complete to the far side. That's Mike Scott making the reception. And take a look at the defense for LSU. Mingo, Downs, Logan, and Montgomery. Have some SEC recognition, the All-American. Muncie, Minter, and Barrow are the linebackers and the defensive secondary, Jalen Mills, true freshman, getting his start out there again. And you see the rest 
of the defensive secondary. A gain of five for Idaho on their first down play. Second and five now from the 42. Blackman, and they do go to the ground. And up the middle, and up near midfield, it is Bass on the carry. So two passes and a run play and a good mix on offense for Idaho so far. Tonight's first quarter presented by Insurance Network of Louisiana. Good look there at Eric Reed, first team all SEC selection. And a good one in LSU's defensive secondary. Blackman is a lot like a Byron Leftwich with a good jumbo size and a good arm. And Bass once again gets the carry, tripped up by Reed. And as I said, a good mix on offense so far. And uh, Idaho, Renee, with a couple of first downs already. And Eric Reed, recognizing very quickly, gets in the backfield. This is a, a nice play by the safety. Kind of gets through the block and makes the tackle very, very tough to do what Eric Reed just did. The junior out of Dutchtown. Boy, what a good look at him. 6 2, 2 0 2 out of Dutchtown. Here he's in. Second and 10 for Idaho. As we say, coming off a tough loss against Bowling Green last week, the Vandals 0-2 on the year. Quick pass across the middle and across midfield onto the Tigers' side of the field, and it looks like Veltung down there making the reception. Martin in to make the tackle for the Tigers. Another another tackle by Martin. You see, gonna look at him, 6-1, 2 2 And they're going to play a lot of... Uh, Straight defense here. They're going to bring a lot of people in. They're playing a nickel right now. Call it a dime, I should say, uh, with a third and long situation. Third and five right now on the Tigers' side of the field, the 48-yard line. A little noise from the crowd. And the Vandals moving the football down the field a little bit here on this opening possession of the game. Pass complete to Bass. Bass near first down territory, and it's going to be close. Michael Eugene came from the left side, and... Uh, Blackman recognized quickly, made the good throw. You see right in the face of Eugene, he throws right over the top to Bass, and he's one-on-one -on, -one in the, on the edge with Jalen Collins, redshirt freshman, making a stop perhaps short of the first down. I think they're going to have to come out and uh, do a quick measurement as they are. Talk about Bass down there, a transfer from Arizona State University. And it looks like the Vandals just about a foot short. Aki's got to feel good about the way his offense is running right now. Bass is a guy that uh, transferred out of Arizona State. Very talented guy. He has uh, three catches coming into this game, and good call here. Looks like the Vandals are going to go for it. Fourth and about a foot to go. Dominique Blackman and his Idaho Vandals. Blackman is not afraid, Doug, to tuck it and get that first down on his own. Big guy, 6'5". 254-pound junior. Blackman under center. And he'll give it to Bass, and Bass is denied by a host of LSU tacklers who read that one from the get-go. Great penetration up front by Anthony Johnson, Jalen Mills, and company. And good look at Anthony Johnson right there. Big stop by the Tigers, and they compelled Idaho State, Idaho's uh, offense, I should say, and now the Tigers with a shrunken field and a pretty good uh, good position for the offense. LSU with the football on its own 46-yard line. First look at LSU's offense tonight. You see the numbers on Zach Mettenberger getting into the spotlight this year. A huge game against Washington last week, as we say, if not for those five drops, a near flawless performance. On first down, the Tigers throwing and throwing downfield. Open receiver! It is Shepard making the grab down by the 11-yard line. Russell Shepard, the senior out of Houston, Texas, beating the defender and coming up with the big play. And Russell Shepard on a double move here, inside-outside on a post-go route. And Russell Shepard came into the game with just one catch. Just a great throw over the top where only Russell Shepard could come down with it. And that's what the Tiger fans have been waiting for for the last three years. Stretching that field, a 6'1", 195-pounder with 4-3-6 speed. Pretty speedy guy, Shepard, with his second catch of the year. That one for a gain of 32. The Tigers first and 10 from Idaho's 21-yard line. To the ground. 
And Blue is going to suffer a couple yard loss on that one. Take a look at the starting lineup for LSU. Blue, and when you hear Blue, it's not Blue, it's Blue, I should say. It's Hopeland, White, Beckham, and Clément on the offensive line. Jurassic, Collins, Lonergan, Williford, and Hurst. Uh, one of the biggest offensive lines in the country. We'll talk more about that throughout the broadcast. The bomb squad is what they call themselves. Loss of three on the play, second and 13. Mettenberger looks to go to the air, tucks it in, avoids one tackle inside the 20, and down to about the 17-yard line. Something Mettenberger doesn't like to do a lot of, but can do it capably, Renee. He can. The Watkinsville, Georgia native can run if he has to. That he can. Here's the Idaho defensive line, Keener, Davis, Buckley, Mayola. The linebackers. Tuwala in the middle. And the secondary, Grimes, Carter, Williams, and Walker. Now, big, third and six. Go ahead. Big Rain. play here in the red zone. This is the type of thing that Les Miles feels his teammate needs to convert in situations like this. LSU 80% in the red zone this year. Mettenberger completes the pass. And it is Boone and Boone in for the score. Touchdown, LSU. And two passes, and just like that, LSU, here early in this first quarter, reach pay dirt. Mettenberger with three touchdown tosses this season, all of them going to number 86, Kedron Boone. So what a matchup, what a combo they have been for 2012. As you say, Renee, fourth catch of the year for Boone. Three of those, four touchdowns. And now... It is Alamo on for the PAT, a perfect 11 for 11 on the year. And LSU getting some business taken care of. Boone and company putting with some points on the board here early on. With a curl coming back. Nice play, and you see Mettenbergen living on that curl route. He breaks the tackle and has nothing but green in front of him. And we'll be back with more Tiger Vision with second rank LSU leading 7 0 after we take this network break. A score on their first possession. Second ranked LSU out in front of the Idaho Vandals 7 0. Insurance Network of Louisiana, without a doubt, the best place for your auto and homeowners insurance. Insurance Network of Louisiana represents numerous top national insurance companies to provide you with all your insurance needs. Call Insurance Network of Louisiana or log on to their easy to use website, lainsurance.net. Take a look at the scoring drive, four plays, 54 yards, and just a buck 59 off the clock, Renee. 17-yard score, and again, as you alluded to, Kadron Boone with his third touchdown catch out of four total catches for the season. Boy, what a weapon he has been, and boy, he's really, really done a great job. The junior out of the California, Oak California. Kirsten, the kickoff specialist, and deep to return is uh, Veltung and Bass. For Idaho, both standing right about at the two-yard line or so, and knowing Harrison, they'll probably pump this one out of the back of the end zone. Belton with 4.39 speed. You know, he gets a head of steam, and he's tough to catch. He's a danger as a punt return and kickoff return specialist. Harrison, 10 of 17 of his kickoffs have gone for touchbacks so far this season. This one high and deep. Looks like it'll be much the same. And in fact it is. So once again, Idaho will take over on its second possession on the 20-yard line. Tonight's first quarter presented by Insurance Network of Louisiana. Good look there at the strong leg or the strong-legged James Hairston. Of course, two number 30s on the LSU roster, both Alima and Hairston, both kickers wearing the same number. I think just to confuse <laughs> announcers. Idaho Vandals, they came into this season with a little uncertainty at quarterback, and of course, Blackman seized that opportunity, and Bass has been injured throughout most of his career. He's looked pretty healthy tonight. So, uh, Idaho taking over on their 25-yard line, and Bass once again gets the tote. And not much for Bass, the senior out of Corona, California. You know, Bass only had 44 carries last year. He had injuries and illness, and again, we talked 
out of Arizona State, a transfer, and uh, he had 15 carries last week against Bowling Green for 62 yards. Good balance, breakaway speed. He's, he gained 30 pounds since he came out of high school. He's strong, compact 213 on a 5'10 frame. On second and eight, back to pass is Blackman. Nice pass across the middle, almost intercepted. They say that it may be, in fact, it is coming up with the interception for the LSU defense. That's Ronald. It's uh, Ronald Martin. Martin, I'm sorry. With credit, Lorenzo Phillips, outstanding freshman out of Patterson, Louisiana. Watch as Blackman drops back with pressure, and you see Blackman, uh, rather, uh, Phillips hitting it up in the air, and Martin hits, gets it right before it touches the ground. Great play by Martin. His first interception of his career, and what a great play by uh, the freshman, true freshman, Lorenzo Phillips out of Patterson, Louisiana. The third interception of the year for LSU, and as we say, they're not saying boo, they're saying blue, as Alfred Blue gets the carry, the junior out of Honville High School, just down the road. And Alfred really worked on uh, his strength, he gained 20 pounds on a 6'2", 220 pounds, and really looks good. Blue once again shedding tacklers and down to about the 10-yard line. Blue, second straight 100-yard rushing game last week. He's really gotten out of the box, the blocks very quickly this year as he jogs back over to the sideline. You know, something else the running backs from LSU can boast about, a lot of games without fumble. Spencer Ware, 209 carries without a fumble. Blue, 117 coming into the game. Hilliard, 88, and Michael Ford, 38. All those carries without a fumble. Hoping to put, put the bad luck on him. First and goal from the 16-yard line. And back to the ground. And again, in that one, uh, Hilliard getting his first carry of the game. Kenny Hilliard got some uh, pretty good bloodlines there, Renee. Take a look at the big guys up front getting the job done for LSU. The bomb squad, as they call themselves, great blocking up front. Leo Collins with the pull. J.C. Copeland is kind of an adopted offensive lineman, but the bomb squad, what an interesting bunch. They very, very tight-knit fraternity. And the pitch goes to Hilliard up the middle, and he'll make it as far as about the seven-yard line. So a pickup of two on the play. Shite in to make the tackle the senior and uh, leader on the Vandal defense with two and a half tackles for losses this year. Also second leading tackler, he's got 16. They repelled him near the goal line and Hilliard, Hilliard gained, uh, rather lost 10 pounds a little quicker. He's mostly a fullback at this time last year. He was a lead blocker, much like J.C. Copeland, but he's got all the skills of an outstanding running back. Mettenberger under center. Hilliard once again gets the football and he's down to the three yard line and a first down for LSU first and goal to go first quarter action and a warm humid night looks like uh, some cramping going on down there that's a hamstring perhaps as here he comes to the sidelines on that last run Jarvis Landry had a key block the wide receiver out of Lutcher LSU returns to Tiger Stadium on Saturday, September 29th, when the Tigers host the Towson Tigers. For the latest news and game day info, log on to www.lsusports.net slash game day. Nice crowd on hand here tonight in Tiger Stadium. Good look there. As and Josh Wilford is down right now, and he's, uh, boy, he's running done a great job at right guard. The junior out of Dotham, Alabama. Wow, 6'7", 334. He's fills a lot of space next to Alex Hurst. Between the two of them, near 700 pounds. That's a lot of beef. Not sure the nature of uh, the issue. Could just be cramping, as we say. High humidity tonight, right around 90 degrees at kickoff. And so, just another warm... Louisiana Knight. Trey Turner from St. Augustine will spell him the redshirt freshman. Number 56 will spell Williford at right guard. and He's got a lot of future. They think a lot of Trey Turner. Blue and J.C. Copeland. 
in the backfield. That is Blue. And he's got daylight in for the touchdown. Alfred Blue. What a key block by J.C. Copeland, the 6'1", 272-pound fullback out of LaGrange, Georgia, allows Alfred Blue his second score of his of the season, and Benberg has got to feel good about that drive. Blue came in averaging 112 yards per game, second best in the SEC, gets his second touchdown of the year and gets some additional yards, and Alamo on for the PAT, his second attempt of the night. Alamo, perfect 12 of 12 on the year. And with 6.29 to go here in this opening quarter, the LSU Tigers, second ranked in all the land, have extended their lead now to 14 0. And we'll be back with more Tiger Vision after we take this local break. Welcome back to Tiger Stadium, second ranked LSU, 14 0, with 6.29 to go here in this opening quarter. Insurance Network of Louisiana, without a doubt, the best place for your auto and homeowner's insurance. Insurance Network of Louisiana represents numerous top national insurance companies to provide you with all your insurance needs. Call Insurance Network of Louisiana or just log on to their easy-to-use website, lainsurance.net. And hey, when it comes to the hottest char-grilled or the coldest raw oysters around, Tiger fans know Acme Oyster House is the hometown advantage. Located on the corner of Acadian and Perkins, Acme's New Orleans-style flavor is sure to please. Acme Oyster House, born in the French Quarter and praised all over. Oh, are they good, too? Woo! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Cher. Beltung and Bass standing back at their own goal line as you get a good look there at Les Miles' eighth season. And, of course, a couple of uh, records on the uh, block here tonight as Miles and his Tigers can uh, accomplish those. But right now, it's a matter of business. 14-0, the Tigers of LSU, second ranked in the country, have uh, scored on their first two possessions. And this one taken at the goal line. That is Bass. And Bass across the 10. And he's not going much farther than that. He is swarmed over at the 11-yard line. Give him a return of 13 on that one. Good look at our scoring drive, six plays, 30 yards, just uh, two and a half, and a little bit of change off the clock. And of course, Alfred Blue from out of the blue, getting his third or second, I should say, touchdown run of this 2012 season. And that, that touchdown was helped along by sophomore safety Ronald Martin with his first interception, shrunk the field for the offense and allowed Blue to score that touchdown, putting the Tigers up 14. And that interception, a thing of beauty as well, after it was tipped, a very athletic interception for Martin. So on first down, facing pressure, it is Blackman. And Blackman. And a gain of one on the play. Tonight's first quarter presented by Insurance Network of Louisiana. You know, Benny Logan with that last tackle, Doug, and they, they liken him to a Michael Brockers, who was the first-round pick of the Rams, and, and Logan has really made some tremendous gains in a short time, and uh, he's so much better than last year and, and made some tremendous strides. Uh, better condition, he's a leader, donning that number 18 jersey, which is so valued by these Tigers. Tigers showing blitz, quick pass to the far side, and it is incomplete. The intended receiver was... Jari Level, sophomore out of Miami. And we're beginning to see Blackman facing some additional and uh, some pretty substantial pressure today. Yeah, they, and, and the Tigers can bring eight. They rotate eight defensive linemen, and they bring them in fresh. Tigers are chomping at the bit right now, and, and Blackman trying to play catch. They're trailing by 14 here with just five and a half minutes to go here in the first. Just one back behind him. That is James Baker, a junior out of Deerfield, Florida. And now on third and nine, Blackman. And the give is to Baker. And not much for Baker there. I think everybody on LSU's defense is in on that tackle. Uh, I don't know if a few guys maybe came off the bench as well. But uh, 
more than enough Tigers there to make the defensive play. Kiki Mingo with the first contact. You see number 49, great penetration, and gets to Baker before anybody else. You see him coming through the B gap and, and making contact and slowing him up. The 6'2", 228-pound Baker had no way to go. Looked like the Tigers were playing with 12 on defense. And Mingo coming off just limping a bit, as we see, and uh, hopefully nothing too serious of nature. Looks like he may have had a foot stepped on with that uh, entourage, that welcome Baker. Bobby Cowan, a highly regarded punter, taking care of the duties. And at his own 38-yard line, flags on the field. And that is Odell Beckham Jr. on the return, a 48-yard punt, but we'll have to wait and see the nature of the uh, flags. They were looking at Jalen Mills, who was trying to block for Beckham, number 28. Perhaps he may have got a hold of a white jersey. Usually a hold or a clip. Idaho just overran that punt that time, and Beckham uh, had gotten past the gunners as they got down the field. Holding number 28 on the receiving teams. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. So there it is. We've seen the explosiveness of Beckham this year, and uh, I know Tiger fans uh, hopeful that they see that again here tonight. 14 nothing. We'll be back after this network break. 14 nothing. The second-ranked LSU Tigers leading the Vandals of Idaho here in this opening quarter. I want to remind you to listen to Les Miles talk about the upcoming game on the Les Miles Show, presented by Capital One Bank, 7 to 8 p.m. each Wednesday, live on WDGL Eagle 98.1 FM in Baton Rouge and statewide on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Or you can attend the show in person at TJ Ribs on Acadian. Check your local listings for the LSU Sports Radio Network affiliates in your area. 4.41 to go in this opening quarter. It's been... Uh, Almost all LSU, although Idaho did show a little bit of offense on their opening series of the game before the LSU defense put a clamp on it. Yeah, they repelled that uh, first drive, and he held them short on fourth. But they went for it on fourth down and didn't quite make it, and the Tigers now set up uh, in pretty good field, shape, good, good field position with their own 32. First and 10. And that is Blue. And Blue will get uh, maybe about 3-4 at the most. You can see that's just a, a nice inside zone play running behind J.C. Copeland and Blue kind of bouncing outside, nothing on the inside. And that's uh, really tough to use your instincts and vision and bounce it outside, which he just did. You see the yards per play so far, LSU averaging eight. And Idaho just a shade under three per play. And the scoreboard definitely reflecting that as well. Second and six after a gain of four by Blue. And Blue once again in the backfield, Mettenberger to throw, and there's another one of those drops. Shepard, who had that big touchdown catch on their opening series on a big play, drops that one, and that's reminiscent of last week with the five drop passes for Mettenberger. You know, and I talked to Zach Mettenberger about that this week, and he said even Jerry Rice from the 49ers, Hall of Famer, dropped passes. So you got to keep the confidence up the wide receivers. He's going to come right back to Shepard shortly, and, uh, you know, don't worry about it. Five drops last week, move on. Uh, he doesn't lose his poise. Just inside four minutes to go. Third and six for LSU. Blue and Hilliard split backs in the backfield. Mettenberger has plenty of time. Looks downfield, open receiver, and cannot connect with Odell Beckham Jr. And we'll see the punting unit for the first time tonight. By the way, Williford back in the game, but he had good protection. Mettenberger threw the ball, and Odell Beckham kind of pulled up and was hoping it out jump and just misread that pass, this fly to the ball, but he tried to come back a little bit and just out jump uh, the defender. And, and, you know, he can do that. He's got a, uh, a quite a vertical, about a 40-inch vertical, but uh, just a little too tall. One of the best punters in the nation, Brad Wing. Yes, he'll step in, three punts averaging. 54 yards per. Of course, he missed the opener with a leg injury, but looks to be back in top shape here. Beltung is deep to return for Idaho. Backtracks a bit, trying to get to the outside. Has a little bit of room, still on his feet, and run out of bounds at the 26, and a penalty flag on the play as well. A 44 yard punt, six yards on the return. Can't fault him for the effort. I think he ran about 
probably 30 to get six. How many times you see the punter get down there and make the tackle or be in on the tackle, which Wing did? Boy, he's a tough-nosed guy. During the return, illegal block in the back, the receiving team, number 16, half the distance to the goal from the spot of the foul. First down. And let's take another look at that one, Renee. That one hurts. Yeah, and that was a nice return, and Belton put on some good. Oh, yeah. That was just in the back, and that's just that's as tough as, as Devin Leslie, I should say, Podrovsky, the tight end. Making that uh, block in the back. Hey, uh, be sure to visit your local Kia dealer, All-Star Kia East or All-Star Kia Baton Rouge. Kia, a dream car for real life, combining elegance, performance, and technology. So Idaho doesn't need anything more than LSU's defense working against them. Uh, a block in the back pins them back to their own nine-yard line where they will begin their offensive series first and ten. Blackman hands it off. And down at the bottom of the pile is uh, Bass once again. Logan and Minter in to make the tackle. That time, uh, the Tigers shot a double blitz with Muncy coming off the right side and Jalen Mills off the left. And good play call by Idaho, but uh, LSU was equal to it and stepped up in the middle as Josh Downs and Logan, along with uh, Minter, stopped the play. Tonight's first quarter presented by Insurance Network of Louisiana. After a game of two, second and eight, Tigers showing blitz. And penalty flags fly, and looks like some movement on the offensive line for the Vandals. Ball start, number 55 offense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. And so the offender, Dallas Sandberg, redshirt freshman. For that Idaho offensive line, two redshirt freshmen and a sophomore starting. And, uh, you know, maybe every day, not so bad. Against the second-ranked LSU Tigers, probably not what you want. Well, you know, LSU's got 22 first-time players this year, 13 true freshmen. So that speaks highly of the youth they have in the Tiger program. So now second and 13, back to Bass. As the Vandals trying to get away from their own end zone. And Bass picks up about a handful there. Big Sam Montgomery, the All-American. And first team All-SEC performer just this week. He was the SEC Co-Defensive Lineman of the Week. The big guy from Greenwood, South Carolina. You know, and he, he answers to the nickname Sonic. He feels like he's got a little stronger, adding 30 pounds since last season. And he promised me this year at Media Day he's going to have 15 sacks in 2012. I said, Sam, I'm like, right in the ring, buddy. I can't erase it. He said, 15 sacks this year. Well, he's 115th of the way uh, he's <laughs> so far. Third and 10 from their own nine. I wouldn't doubt him. And once again, it's to the ground. Bass. And nowhere to go for Bass. As that uh, LSU defense, Kevin Minter coming up from his... Mike linebacker position in there to help make the tackle. And Mentor has come so far. Last year he wasn't ready, but he steps up like a Mike linebacker, 6'2", 245, out of Sewanee, Georgia, and really, really put the stop on the runner, and he's done a great job. 15 tackles come into this game, and what a great job he's done. Odell Beckham standing exactly smack dab at midfield as he gets ready to return this punt. A mighty explosive young man. And the punt comes off. It is low and fielded at the 43-yard line. Beckham's got some room up the middle. And inside the 35 to the 33. A 36-yard punt. And we'll give him 11 on the return. Young man gets some uh, pretty good bloodlines as well. Mom, the track star. Dad, the former standout LSU Tiger. Yes, in fact, his dad led the team in rushing in 91, and his roommate, you may heard it, Sha Shaquille O'Neal, was Odell Beckham Sr.'s roommate. How about that? Yeah. And uh, comes from a pretty successful school there in the city of New Orleans that's uh, turned out some pretty good quarterbacks, haven't they, Renee? Newman High School. The Illinois. Manning brothers. Yes. Newman High School. What a basketball player he was. Elliot Porter now in its center. 
number 55 out of Archbishop Shaw High School. That Shepard getting the go on first down. Shepherd. And they'll spot that one at the, about the 29 yard line. So give Shepard a gain of three. Second and seven now for Mettenberger. The University of Georgia transfer sat in the wings last year and tonight and this season. The spotlight is on the big 6'5", 230 pound junior. Once again to the ground. Shepard again. Breaking tackles to the near side. Run out of bounds at the 11 yard line. As Mayoa makes the tackle for Idaho, a pickup of 18 for Shepard. Nice handoff to Shepard, inside handoff, and he's just following. Great hold by Alex Hurst. He puts on the afterburner and throws some fluid, nice moves, and a little jitterbug, explosive, very explosive, a little jello in his boots. And again, <laughs> Shepard just outrunning. The defense hits the corner of the edge where he's most dangerous. Nice pick up first down, Tigers. And it's Blue back in the offensive backfield now. And Blue gets the call. And inside the 10 to about the 9-yard line. Interesting about Shepard, Renee. These are his first carries of the season. I've always felt like the end of the first quarter. Always trying to find the ideal place for him and work him into the offense. It's the end of the first quarter. 14-0, the Tigers of LSU. Out in front, the second-ranked team in the country, and we'll be back with second-quarter action from Tiger Stadium after this local break. Start of the second quarter, 14-0. LSU out in front of visiting Idaho. When it comes to the hottest char-grilled or the coldest raw oysters around, Tiger fans know Acme Oyster House is the hometown favorite. Located on the corner of Acadian and Perkins, Acme's New Orleans-style flavor is sure to please. Acme Oyster House, born in the French Quarter and praised all over. Take a look at a couple of uh, highlights from the first quarter now as LSU showing they can make the big play as well, Renee. Mettenberger hooks up with Boone again, the best combo the Tigers have had this year for the third time on, a, on the opening drive for a score. And then Alfred Blue with his second touchdown. Nice block by J.C. Copeland, who's busted 30 face masks as a fullback thus far. Tigers up 14-0. And take a look at some numbers from the opening quarter. As you can see, the Idaho first downs, Renee came on their first series after that, nothing. Rushing yards, you see in favor of the Tigers, and total yards, 112 to 34, and passing yards. It's been short passing, but successful for the LSU Tigers. And so the Tigers knocking on the door once again. Mettenberger looking into the end zone and the pass incomplete actually throwing it just short of there J.C. Copeland the great big fullback a converted defensive player that Les Miles has talked so much about getting him into the offense and actually throwing the ball to him that's the first time they've done it this year he said he wants to work on his hands a little bit he was a, a defensive tackle and he had 27 sacks as a senior before converting the fullback at LSU Tonight's second quarter presented by Acme Oyster House, born in the French Quarter, and praised all over. A little, little concern, Elliot Porter still in the game at center. Don't know if, if Lonergan is injured or they've just taken a, a long, long look at Elliot Porter. Uh, sophomore. Third and eight, it's going to be intercepted. Picked off by the Vandals. And Mettenberger is going to try to run him down. And unsuccessful so far. And finally caught up. It is Gary Walker, the senior, coming up with a big interception on the goal line. And if not for the efforts of Odell Beckham Jr. on a 95-yard interception return, it would have been six points on the board for the Vandals. And Meckenberger just stared down the receiver and just threw. He did not see where Walker had jumped in front of the pass. And again, had it not been for Odell Beckham with his 4-3-3 speed, Meckenberger is trying to cut him off with the pass a little bit. But uh, Odell Beckham catches him from behind along with Boone and knock him out of bounds short of the end zone of the five. My oh my, the second interception of the year for Mettenberger. Mettenberger just kind of looked, he stared at the receiver there, Doug, and he just, that was a dead giveaway. 
Purple and gold coming to life a bit in the stands. Trying to cheer the Tigers, keep the Vandals off the board. Throwing into the end zone, pass incomplete. There is a penalty flag on the play. The intended receiver down there, Michael Legrone. And it looks like that one's going to be thrown on Luke Muncy, who was over there in coverage. Pass interference, number 52, defense. By rule, the ball will be placed at the two-yard line. Automatic first down. And Muncy is a junior out of Klein, Texas. And has kind of taken a spot since Tosh Jones is not going to be eligible this year. And he's a converted safety. A uh, little contact there in the end zone. Muncy trying to throw his hands up. But the winner has already hit the ground. First and goal to go for the Vandals of Idaho. Baker gets the call, and the Tigers rising to the occasion, leading the way Ronald Martin, who had that interception earlier in the game. Great surge by Sam Montgomery and Anthony Johnson, number nine. Look at this. Comes in Martin, but Montgomery allowed Martin to shoot in from the inside and make the tackle. Great, great play by that defense. Anthony Johnson and Sam Montgomery holding up that line. So a loss of two on the play. And now second and goal from the four. Throwing into the end zone and getting the touchdown. It is Blackman getting the score for the Vandals of Idaho. And, and making the grab down there, Michael Legrone. That's his second touchdown of the season and Blackman's got to be feeling good about that. Blackman just rolls out the left-handed thrower. Little bootleg action. He throws finds Legron unattended all by himself in the end zone for the score. Trey Farquhar handling the PAT. The senior out of Redlands, California gets the PAT and makes it a 14-7 game. So not so fast, LSU. It's now 14-7 as the Vandals answer with a touchdown. We'll be back with more after we take this network break. Early second quarter here in Tiger Stadium, and the visiting Vandals of Idaho have gotten on the board. No thanks to an interception that uh, boosted that by Zach Mettenberger. Insurance Network of Louisiana, without a doubt, the best place for your auto and homeowners insurance. Insurance Network of Louisiana represents numerous top national insurance companies to provide you with all your insurance needs. Call Insurance Network of Louisiana or just log on to their easy-to-use website, lainsurance.net. Take another look. Here's the touchdown. Of course, that was after the big 94-yard interception. And Blackman just kind of bootleg and finds a 6'2", 273-pound converted defensive end, Legrone, with his first touchdown catch of the season, his fifth catch overall. And uh, they got to be feeling good about themselves. And there's a scoring drive, just two plays, five yards, and less than a minute to take care of business for the Vandals of Idaho. Taken at the eight-yard line. And across the 30, and a little bit more. That's uh, Michael Ford. We'll see Ford back there handling kickoff chores too often, but he gets 29 on that return and sets LSU up for pretty good field position. Good look there at the big guy, Josh Jurassic, who's a six-year senior and doing a great job on the left side right now of that offensive line, Renee. Yeah, he was. You know, he was kind of a coach last year as he's sitting out with an injury and. Oh, what a great job. People think he's never played left tackle. You know, back in the Chick-fil-A Bowl, uh, he played he, in uh, 2008. He played left tackle, so he's not foreign to that position. But he can play anywhere except maybe center. But what a great job he does. He's that ringleader up front for the bomb squad. So Mettenberger, to redeem himself, comes right back to throw in the football. Looks left, pass complete to the near side. Beckham spin steps out of bounds just prior to getting to midfield. A gain of 12 on the play. And so that'll be good enough for another first down for LSU. Mettenberg is stepping back and stepping into his throw. Is, you know, nice throw by Mettenberg, a nice catch by Beckham. And, you know, as we uh, alluded to earlier in the broadcast, how so many passes would drop Beckham with a couple of open drops last week against Washington, all forgiven, forgotten. 
Mettenberger under center, fake handoff, looks to throw again, downfield to the far side, gets to it in. Odell Beckham Jr. has another first down as he is on his way to a very big night tonight. Gain of 13 on the play for Beckham. On a deep out in Mettenberger with that play action, that running game opens up the play action and Beckham with an out route and he's really worked very hard this summer, Odell Beckham did, on his meticulous route running, his hands and things of that sort. And, you know, that, those basketball skills, which he excelled at in high school, really help you as a wide receiver. Mettenberger now to the ground. It's blue as he squeezes through the middle across the 30, inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. Nice hole on the right side by Elliot Porter and, and uh, Josh Wilford allowing Blue nice run. Just want to remind you, tonight's second quarter is presented by Acme Oyster House, born in the French Quarter, praised all over. Gain of eight, second and two now for Mettenberg and company. And it looks like a delay of game, did not get the snap Delay off. of game, offense, five-yard penalty, Still second down. So instead of second and two, it'll be second and seven. Now for Mettenberger. Started his collegiate career at the University of Georgia. Things not working out there. And uh, made his way to Butler Community College in Kansas. Led the team to the National Junior College Championship. And now, two years removed from that, here he is. Starting quarterback for the Tigers of LSU. Second and seven. Back to the ground. That is Blue trying to make the most of it. And not much there for Alfred Blue. Scheidt with a great play defensively for the Vandals. Coming in from his weak linebacker position number 33. Good look at him right there. The 6'1", 235 pound senior out of Hawaii. With a nice play. Stopping him short. Now third and long. Six for the Tigers. LSU has scored 40 or more points in 12 of its last 16 games, leading 14-7 here. Timeout, LSU. It's their first timeout of the half. So Mettenberger needs to talk things over on the sideline as he makes his way back over. The 6'5", 230-pound junior, second-ranked Tigers out in front, 14-7. We'll be back with more from Tiger Stadium after we take this network break. Still early second quarter, 11-13 to go here in Tiger Stadium. The second-ranked Tigers out in front of Idaho, 14-7. Louisiana Cat is a proud sponsor of LSU Athletics. Louisiana Cat, your statewide Caterpillar dealer. Also, you got to get excited about men's basketball season right around the corner. Bring back the passion to the PMAC by signing up for the 2012-2013 LSU men's basketball season tickets. Visit lsutix.net for more information. Johnny Jones says he's got a lot of promise. He's going to do a great job for the uh, hardwood team for the Tigers. You know, Mettenberger, he was a big fan of Ben Roethlisberger. Steelers fan, of course. He liked Kevin Green, but he also liked uh, Drew Bledsoe, the Patriots. He said he liked those, uh, those big, strong arm guys like Bledsoe and, and Roethlisberger. And, well, he's done a good job. He's the first one in the waiting room, last one out. He's become a leader and really accepted his role as a quarterback on and off the field for the Tigers. I should say those burgers stick together. Hilliard gets the carry on third and a half dozen. And that will not be enough to get a first down. So LSU looking at a fourth down situation, I would think. Renee, they may end up going for it here. Are they going to go for a field nope. goal? No, they're going to kick it. So we'll get a good look here at Drew Alamo. One of those two guys that kicked the football for LSU who are number 30. You know, Alamo kicked a 57-yarder in practice, so he's got the leg to do it. He's 87% as a penalty flag is to field. He'll lead the substitution, yes. offense, the five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Well, that may now take them out of field goal position. Well, this will be a 55-yarder now, and uh, that may be a little lengthy. So uh, if he doesn't convert, of course, the ball will go over right there to the to the Vandals, and that will really shrink the field, so they have to rethink this now. Yeah, it looks like they're going to bring out the uh, punt team. 
And they'll have to do it pretty quickly if they do, or they're going to burn another timeout, it looks like. A little confusion down on the field right now as the officials discussing some things. But uh, as you say, Renee, this will be a 55-yard kick, the longest on the year for Alema is 44. He's four out of five this year. And what they'll probably do... Well, Wayne is going to kick it. And, and right. Wayne, you know, has the, uh, has the leg strength. He kicked a 62-yarder into the wind last week. Certainly can do it. And he's got great placement on his punts as well. Good hang time, great placement. Strictly a uh, field position type situation right now as Justin Beltung stands just inside his 10-yard line. See if the Tigers can stop it. They cannot. So that one will come out, and uh, it'll be the Vandals football on their own 20-yard line, a 38-yard punt. And, of course, it was uh, a hope that it would be a little bit less than that. Back to Tiger Stadium in just a moment. We'll take a network break, and we'll see you in just a moment. It's a 14-7 LSU lead over Idaho mid-second quarter. Hey, Tiger fans, when it comes to quality and miles per gallon, Chevy is MVP with 10 models that get 30 miles per gallon or better, and quality that beats the competition as sure as the Tigers will beat theirs. For fuel economy and quality, shop your Lake Charles area Chevy dealers. You know, Doug, when I look at this game here, so close right now, Tigers up 14-7. to But you think back to some of the games that's got them to this uh, point over non-conference opponents. And you think back to 2004, a 22-21 uh, overtime winnable over uh, Oregon State when place kicker for the Beavers, Alexis Cerna, missed a pair of extra points to give the Tigers a chance to win. And then in 2008, a game that we did against Troy, where the Tigers came back from a 31-3 deficit and won against the men of Troy, 40-31. Close game right now. We will never forget that one. Ryan Bass is the only running back. And uh, throwing on first down, Blackman completes the pass. And Belton makes the catch. And it's uh, just a short gain on the play. They give him about two on the play. Tonight's second quarter presented by Acme Oyster House. Born in the French Quarter. Praised all over. And Beltung is on the Paul Harding watch list as uh, among the players that are best uh, in all around, if you will, as a receiver, punt returner, runner. And uh, Beltung, really, really good player. It's his seventh catch of the year. Going to the air is Blackman. That ball tipped. Another interception for the Tigers of LSU. Ronald Norton has his second. This one, he takes it to the house. Two interceptions for the sophomore as he gets the Tigers the points. Great coverage allowing Martin. And again, this is why they have the tip drill at practice as Blackman throws it to a receiver down the field. That was just a great play. And that was Jalen Collins allowing Martin the ball up in the air to ricochet. And he returns it all the way for a touchdown. And Martin's got to be feeling good about himself. 45 yards on that one. Alama on to poke this one through and does successfully. And just like that, 21 to 7 and high fives and praise for the sophomore, Ronald Martin. As, uh, boy, that's got to be a good feeling down there. You know, Ronald Martin is a guy to White Castle, and he's got great safety skills. Good looking at him right there. And he also, you may remember, he played four games on the basketball team for Trent Johnson last year. So he's got great feet, great hips. And again, Jalen Collins tipping this ball up, number 32, a redshirt freshman. And Martin is right there. Good block right there, allowing him to get down and... Anthony Johnson, number 90, look at him getting down the field along with Thao Simon. But just a heads-up play right along the sideline. Veltung took a leap of faith there and couldn't get in, and Martin's got to be feeling good. His second interception of the season, second of the game. So two interceptions for Martin tonight, matching the season total coming into this game for LSU so far this year. And you know, you may remember against Georgia in the SEC title game last year, Doug, he had a, a breakup in the end zone, saved a touchdown. So he's uh, come a long way, just a sophomore. What a future he has. No question about it. 9.05 to go. The Tigers had the Vandals breathing down their neck after a Mettenberger interception and a touchdown scored thereafter by the Vandals. 
And just like that, it's now 21-7. As you get a look there at Hairston as he gets ready to, to kick off. Tigers got to feel a little better now with the score up 21-7 with just over nine minutes to go. And uh, I'm sure John Chavis would like to have a big stop with the defense of four and out. Three and out. And get the Tigers good field position. That, that last touchdown by Blackman, and that had to make that offense feel good to the Vandals. And the, the offensive output has been very anemic for the Vandals. New offensive coordinator Jason Gesser for Idaho is uh, trying to, you know, different little wrinkles and uh, done a pretty good job. Blackman is starting to get in, in sync a little bit. And, uh, you know, that quarterback position was really up in the air until the opening day. And here's going to kick off. This one's going to be short and taken at the seven yard line that is Belfong and he is smashed once he gets across the 15 yard line after a return of 12. Insurance Network of Louisiana without a doubt the best place for your auto and homeowners insurance. Insurance Network of Louisiana represents numerous top national insurance companies to provide you with all your insurance needs. Call Insurance Network of Louisiana or just log on to their easy to use website lainsurance.net you know, Doug, so many, so much is made of Brad Wing and, and the special teams of the Tigers. Their special teams coach, Thomas McGay, he had stints in the NFL with the Chiefs, Texans, Broncos, and the Giants during that Super Bowl team 2007. So, really good coach for the special teams. That's the reason for LSU success. Todd Handley is in the backfield for the Vandals and gets the call. It's his first carry of 2012. And he gains 14 yards on that one. Gash the Tigers on the left side for a nice run there. A nice pickup is. And you see, of course, the experience for Les Miles, the road that took him to uh, Baton Rouge, and of course, uh, all the others. Well, you know, and, and the thing is, people say that you want a coach so you get to the NFL. These are the coaches that went from the NFL to LSU. Rick Haley, coach the defensive line, of course, Les Miles. Coach the tight ends for the Cowboys. Mike Scott on the receiving end of that one from Blackman, a gain of 15 on that play. Of course, the Vandals have thoughts of trying to put some more points on the board here before the end of this second quarter and go into the halftime in a much better position. And Blackman finds his receiver. Nice route on the inside. Nice pickup of first down. And Scott with eight catches coming with the game. Another first down for the Vandals. As they're near midfield. Quick pass to the far side. It is complete. And to the 45-yard line. Before he is uh, dragged down was Dion Bass. And of course, uh, quite a few brothers on this team. Dion, the brother of Ryan. Yes. And he's got some uh, family thing going on there in Idaho. A couple of bra brother tandems for the Vandals. You can look at Lovett right there. What a receiver. Najee Dovett. Lovett. Nice drive here by the Vandals. Seven and a half to go. Blackman, another quick pass and complete down to the 42-yard line. Maybe close for a first down. May have it. Tackled by Bell Simon. And he will get it. Good look there at Simon from Eunice, Louisiana. And Les Miles wanted to take this opportunity. Everybody's talking about, you know, how high the Tigers going to win by. They wanted to work on some things and, and move forward. Uh, you know, with the game against Auburn next week, the SEC opener. There's a lot of improvement the Tigers need in some areas. Another first down for Idaho. Blackman, pass to the far side, and complete once again is Jari Level. Sophomore out of Miami. Interesting story, just joined the team in fall camp. Uh, transfer from El Camino Community College down in Southern California. And uh, has certainly stepped in and done a great job for Idaho. He is their leading receiver this season. He had 10 catches against Bowling Green for 119 yards. So he is a weapon. That was Micah Eugene coming up this strong safety blitz, blitz off the right edge and 
Credit Blackman for picking up the blitz and, and finding Lovo. So now second and five. Blackman still has it under pressure, dumps it to the near side. It is LeGrone who has another catch, including a touchdown earlier in the game. And he's down to, he'll mark that one at the 22-yard line. And watch the heat that Blackman gets before he releases the ball. He's going to take a shot right here in the chops. And that was just standing in strong as Minter just came on him. And, you know, Blackman stood tall and delivered the ball to his favorite receiver, Legron, and nice first down pickup. Third catch of the night for Legron. Not an easy guy to tackle. The numbers on him, 6'2 and 273 pounds. With 17 sacks as a senior at North Dakota was a player of the year there. Great athlete on both sides. Open receiver touchdown. Idaho. It is Jari Level. And he was wide open in the end zone for the Vandals of Idaho. Obviously a miscommunication as Dow Simon here in a zone defense and, and Simon just thought he'd get help over the top he did not get it safety could not arrive in time and the Vandals get on the scoreboard nice pitch and catch with Blackman Farquhar on for the PAT and the Vandals have gotten what they had hoped for and that is another touchdown before they head into the intermission and once again have pulled to within seven points and Blackman again he's looking for his receiver just a nice move to the outside just a go route and a nice pitch and catch as level and you see boy he's Blackman he's excited about that as he finds level in the end zone in that zone coverage and Val Simon just let him go, anticipating he'd get some help over the top. Seven plays, 81 yards in less than three and a half minutes, level on the receiving end, and Blackman on that series, a perfect five of five passing. Hey, I want to remind you to visit your local Kia dealer, Ray Brandt Kia or Sterling Kia. Kia, a dream car for real life, combining elegance, performance, and technology. Visit your local Kia dealer. So 21-14 here in Tiger Stadium, 534 to go. And you can see Rob Akey, he is some kind of excited and for good reason. His Vandals have traveled a great distance here. Just the second meeting all time between these two schools. And, you know, Renee coming into this game, Idaho is only averaging eight points per game. And now against one of the top defenses in the country here tonight, they've scored 14. And, yeah, the Idaho fans have made the trip down here pretty happy right now. And Aki is a very emotional guy, very emotional guy. Coming into this game, 19-45 record, sixth season in Idaho, the state of state. Uh, but, you know, you look at some of the quarterbacks that come from this system, Doug Nussmeyer, John Fries, and Nathan Enderley, who was just released by Jacksonville. But he's got to be feeling good right now, trailing by, four, by seven in such a venue as this. He's got to be feeling good with five minutes left. His Vandals have a shot here. You know, when you have a touchdown like that with just a few minutes left, it picks up the defense emotionally. And taking that one just about six yards deep in the end zone is Shepard. And Shepard still on his feet across the 35. Look at that. Ford. And Ford across. And a nice return here as the Tigers looking to uh, obviously put a little magic together here before the end of the first half. Watch this wall. We talked about the special teams of the LSU Tigers and Chase Claymont, Russell Shepard. You see with a nice block and Luke Muncy cleaning it up and Ford flashing at 4-4 speed, scooting up the sidelines, giving the Tigers good field position. So Mettenberger going to work here. Just one back in the offensive backfield, and that is Blue. And the pitch goes over to Alfred Blue. Across the 45 and two near midfield. A nice pickup on the play. Key to that play, Jarvis Landry on the right side. Uh, Boone, I should say, with a really, really nice block. And those receivers love to block. Boone and Landry and Odell Beckham. And, you know, it's been traditional with the Tiger receivers. Always, always good blockers here. 
And Mettenberger once again to the air. Blue on the receiving end. And enough for the first down. And so the Tigers get the first down across midfield with inside five minutes to go here in the second quarter. Just leading 21-14 over Idaho. Blue with good hands, his fifth catch of the season. Plenty of time for Mettenberger. Pass is complete. And it's Landry. And right at about midfield, Landry's dropped there. Keener there to make the defensive play. And watch Tuala, the uh, middle linebacker number 35, kind of blew this up a little bit. He really slowed things down and did a great job. Also, coming from the outside, Ted Thompson slowed things. Ball is loose after Mittenberger is sacked. Still loose, and Blue pounces on it back at the 42-yard line. Boy, Mettenberger trying to look downfield and make a throw, and uh, he got hit from behind, and the ball popped loose. Mayoa came from the outside. Timeout. Timeout. And Idaho. Like, That's their first timeout of the half. And Mayoa just put on a speed rush on Josh Washington and got to the quarterback, knocking him loose, and luckily the Tigers got it back. Alfred Blue down in the spot, but boy, Mayoa really, really put on a speed rush and got to the outside. Yeah, that thing just squirted through the hands of Jurassic and uh, fortunately Blue in the right place at the right time. So, 3.59 remaining here. Second quarter, LSU facing a third and very long 21 right now and leading the Vandals of Idaho 21-14. to 14. Tiger fans not happy with this uh, score thus far, 21-14. They really thought Tigers would be up by a monumental score and start bringing in some some fresh jerseys. But Tigers really need to work on some things offensively and defensively. And the Vandals, look at that, not, a, lot of, a lot of happy faces right now. Speaks for itself, does it not? Tonight's second quarter presented by Acme Oyster House, born in the French Quarter and praised all over. Got a few Vandal fans in the house. And definitely plenty of LSU fans. Blue and Hilliard, the backs for LSU. Mettenberger looks to throw. Pressured and brought down at the 39-yard line. And I'll tell you, Renee, Idaho really up for the challenge so far here tonight. Mayoa with his second sack. He's got three and a half on the season, and Mayoa is that speed rush specialist. You can see him crashing in from the outside, and again, he's giving Josh DeWarsic his hands full. Hilliard tries to block him, but he gets past Hilliard and past Josh DeWarsic again on Mettenberg before you know it. Veltung is back. This one is a low driving punt taken at the 15-yard line. Veltung swarmed over and driven back to the 10-yard line. Landry there leading the coverage on special teams. Jarvis Landry, not only is he an outstanding receiver, he missed 29 practices last year. That's the reason he really didn't do as much as he'd like to. But even though he was blocked in the back, Jarvis Landry, with great coverage, was in on the tackle. And, and aiding him was Deion Jones, a freshman out of Jesuit. So credit Jones and Landry with outstanding coverage on that punt. So the Vandals will have it at their own 12-yard line. And 3.18 remaining here. And you see some of the stoic faces Look at in Tiger Stadium. That's right. And, you know, these games lend themselves sometimes, Renee, to a little bit of a letdown. <laughs> Next week, LSU taking on Auburn as they get into the thick of SEC play. Blackman and his troops. And to the outside and to the near side, picking up... a. About a half dozen, that is Todd Handley, the redshirt freshman out of Riverside, California. Tackled by Martin. And of course, Martin with a huge night so far tonight. Two interceptions, one return for a touchdown. Pickup of three, second, and seven. And I've got to think right now, Renee, if uh, Idaho goes into the break, just down 21-14, they'd be happy. They'd love to just run the clock out on this series. Well, certainly, Blackie would like to come away with the score here. Tip almost intercepted again. Are you a bit surprised that they've gone to the air, Renee? Well, no, not really. And, and Barrow, the, the graduate from John Aaron High School in New Orleans, steps up front of that, only, almost intercepted. 
before the snap. False start, offense. All the players were not set. It's a five yard penalty. It's still second down. So that'll push the Vandals back. Five more. Take a look at the left side of the offensive line here. That was Cody Ellens. Is moving prematurely. And so now second and 12 from their own 10 yard line. And it's come to life a little bit in the end zone. And another whistle and penalty flag. Premature movement again, it appears. Ball start, offense number 55. Five yard penalty, still second down. And that end of the stadium is where all the students are, Doug. There's a lot of noise down there. Sounds like an airplane with the noise. Wow. <laughs> kind of like uh, the student's version of the flyover. <laughs> yeah, before the game. There you see the penalties. Pretty even here tonight. Both teams with four. And uh, 217 and counting here. And this is about the most we've heard from the crowd here tonight. Blackman under center and three consecutive plays where we've had penalties. That time, I think it was LSU jumping uh, across and making contact. But it might be the third consecutive no, false it, start. It looked like... Put your it, money down on this one. It looked like Legrone may have moved prematurely. We'll see. False start. Offense number 52. After the 50 the goal. Down. The good news for Idaho, Renee, is if they keep doing this, there's only so far back they can go. Uh, I didn't see A.J. Oh. Jones, but I did move, see Far Legrone there. move. Yeah, yeah, right well, here on the right-hand side. They said, they said A.J. Jones right guard. Didn't see him, but it, I saw Legrone. It's kind of tough when you're 273 pounds trying to move forward and put it in reverse right away. Pinned back toward their own end zone right now. Second and a whole bunch. And to the ground they go. Someone on the Vandals lost their helmet and will have to come out for a play. That was A.J. Jones, who was flagged for the penalty in the previous play. Jones has to go out for one play. Come out! And of course, a new rule this year. And you know, the thing is now, if the Tigers can be successful on this third down, they'll get excellent field position with just about a minute and a half to go. And it'll be about a minute and a half to go in the first half. And 90 seconds should give the Tigers ample time to at least get in the field goal position. Coming up at halftime, we'll have a nice chat with Joe Oliva, Vice Chancellor and Athletic Director for the Tigers. So they got some great things going on here at LSU, and he'll bring us up to speed on all of that. You know, we, we've been talking about the defensive backfield, Doug, and Ronald Martin and some of the other guys. But, you know, John Chavis, the defensive coordinator for the Tigers, his specialty is defensive backs. He's turned out Eric Berry at Tennessee, and, of course, Patrick Peterson, Tyran Matthew, and Mo Claiborne in uh, Tiger Town. So defensive backfield, even though young right now, that's a specialty. So just a minute 47 before the half, LSU's defense, which has risen to the occasion tonight. That young man right there. Ronald Martin, two interceptions, one return for a touchdown. If not for that. <laughs> Good tie score. So 21-14, Les Miles. Spoke with him before the game. So just wants to see good, continual improvement out of his team. I don't know if he's seen that in all phases so far here tonight. Third and mighty long. And nowhere to go to third progress. They'll put that one at the one-yard line. They're not going to call that a safety. But great defensive pursuit. Anthony Johnson leading the charge. LSU. That's their final time out of the half. It'll be a 30-second timeout. Interesting, Renee, that they would use the timeout well, the now. Clock, well, the game clock operator, please reset the game clock to 1 minute 41 seconds. 1 minute 41 seconds.
So the LSU Tigers here just a minute and a half away trying to make something happen here before the half. I've got to think they're a bit surprised, and I was a little surprised also, Nate, that they went and used the timeout right now. They might need it there in the final seconds of this first half. 95 seconds to go, so you certainly want to use uh, all the time to get it to try to save it. So punting from uh, deep in his own end zone right now is Bobby Cowan. He's a good one, a Ray Guy watch. And he gets off a pretty nice high punt. That one's going to be taken right at midfield by Odell Beckham Jr. to the near side as he squirts out of bounds. Inside the 40, they'll spot it at the 39, a 10-yard return, a 48-yard boot by Cowan. And so now a minute 33 remaining here in this opening half. And the Tigers of LSU up 21-14, but a chance to put more points on the board. The Tigers now at their own, uh, at the uh, Idaho 39-yard line. And Mettenberger, you see his numbers on the night. Backs to his sides, and under pressure, gets it unloaded to Blue. Mettenberger hit hard right as he connects on that pass. A game of nine, and just a hair short of the first down. So second and one now for Mettenberger as the time and the clock continues to roll, and it will do so unless the Tigers can get it out of bounds. Mettenberger looking for money. Downfield pass complete. Landry, is he inbounds? Yes, indeed he was. I should say Shepard making the catch. Shepard coming up with a nice grab on the far sideline. And he's at the seven-yard line. And the Tigers threatening to score here in uh, with just seconds to go. And Mettenberger throws a laser right here to Shepard. Only where he can catch it on the outside shoulder on the out route. And Shepard comes up with another big play, putting the Tigers in field position, great field position. As you see, the Tigers, no timeouts remaining. 45 seconds on the clock. First and goal to go from the seven. Mettenberger looking into the end zone. Pass to the near side, open receiver. Touchdown, and that time it is Landry. Mettenberger to Landry, touchdown Tigers. LSU getting it back on a short field and taking care of business in the final seconds here of this first half. And he really carved up that defense, Mettenberger, all pass. Nice throw right here on the outside to Landry. And what a fingertip catch he makes. The sophomore to Lutcher High School. The 11th catch of the year for Landry. His first touchdown catch of the year. Alamo takes care of. PAT business and 28-14, just what the Tigers wanted and needed before the half. And Mettenberger was in a zone here, all passing, all completions, and a good pass protection on the left side. And boy, I tell you, that was a great catch by Landry in the corner of the end zone. Good move, post corner move, post corner, and the quarterback bit Landry with a great catch. Look at the pass protection as Hilliard and Copeland give him protection. Landry again, that's full extension there. On that, that was three plays, 39 yards, all passes, 50 tick, 56 ticks, seven yard touchdown toss to Jarvis Landry. Sets the Tigers up pretty good to go into halftime. They'll need to make sure they take care of business here in the final 37 seconds, but you've got to give credit where credit is due as uh, Coach Aiki and his Vandals have come in here, have not been intimidated by the largest crowd that they've been in front of this season and will be in front of this season, and they've played some exceptional football, taking care of some great opportunities and taking advantage of others. They really have, Doug, and the thing is that they really pushed the Tigers to the limit. Tigers are up 28-14 to 14 right now, but remember that that interception return by Ronald Martin was huge. And if not there for that, uh, Tigers would be really, really, uh, right now, be, be a tight, tight situation. You've got to credit Idaho, and they got to be feeling good about themselves right now. There you see the LSU offense scoring on 13 of 23 possessions this season, leading the SEC in drive efficiency. 
you know, 28 points at the half. You ordinarily you'd say, hey, it was a successful first half. Granted, it was. Also, one of those scores came from the defensive side. I think the big question tonight has been the mistakes that have led to Idaho's successes. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Uh, you know, that blown coverage down on the uh, in the end zone where um, where Thal Simon just did not get help over the top, and, and uh, that that touchdown really was uh, big in this game. Bass and Veltung back to return. And that one's taken at the one by Veltung. And he's across the 15, run out of bounds at about the 17, 18 yard line. And uh, how about the Harrison down there making the tackle? Got to like that. There is a penalty flag. Kickers love making tackles, though. Oh, man, I tell you. And the Tigers have some tough kickers with, with the guys they have, Harrison and Wing and... Alamo. Alamo. You know, right now, Mettenberg, 9 out of 13, 117 yards, a pair of touchdowns, and one interception. But he's done a pretty good job thus far. And, you know, Wood, he was in a zone this previous possession. During the return, holding on the receiving team, number 85, popped the distance to the goal from the end of the run, first down. Good look there at Harrison. 6-1, 220-pounder. And at Dallas, Texas, Harrison really did a great job for the Tigers. So with 30 seconds remaining here in the opening half, Les Miles and his Tigers look to be going into the intermission up 28-14. They're looking for a kneel down here. They're not going to try anything. Inside their own, uh, down by their own goal, they're going to kneel it down and just get out of here with trailing by 14. Dominique Blackman has to be pleased as his uh, Vandals, as we say, heading into the half, down just 14, and on two occasions have closed to within seven points. Rob Akey and his Vandals, a happy bunch right now as we head into the intermission. Les Miles and his Tigers up 28-14. Haven't seen the best of them. And, of course, as we say, it's been just a couple of miscues, really, for LSU, Renee, that have uh, kind of put him in a tough situation. We'll be back with halftime. It's 28-14 here at Tigers Stadium. We'll see you on the other side. It's a network break here on Tiger Vision. Welcome back. 28-14. We are at the half. Second-ranked LSU. Trying to put away a pesky Idaho Vandal squad and uh, haven't been successful, successful doing that so far. This is that game that kind of falls in between after a big victory heading into SEC play for LSU. Haven't seen the best of LSU, I don't think, so far tonight. No, and, and, and you can bet that Medberger, they're going to sit down and try to get things going, get back in sync a little bit. And, and again, credit Idaho uh, with their offense. Mm -hmm. It really, really took advantage of the opportunities and put some points up. And their confidence has to be sky high right now as they come out for the second half. Defense needs to step and need a big stop. The LSU does have that interception for a score, which was major, major. But they need to make some big stops right now. Take a look at some uh, first half highlights. And of course, as we say, Idaho really came out looking pretty strong. But it was the Tigers who got on the board first. Double move by Russell Shepard gets him in great field position. And next is the connection that's worked so well. Three times for scores as Mettenberger hooks up for Gadron Boone for their third score. His third score of the season and Mettenberger's third touchdown pass. Blue comes up with a crushing block by J.C. Copeland. His second touchdown run of the campaign. And then an interception return was major. And watch this play by Odell Beckham, touchdown saving. And Blackman comes up with a throw uh, with the touchdown to Legron. And again, Legron comes right, rather, uh, Blackman comes right back with another throw. Great pitch and catch by the Vandals of Lavelle. And an interception by Martin, tipped by uh, Collins, Jason Collins. And Martin races to the end zone with great blocking entourage downfield. Martin puts him up 21 to 14. Mettenberg again with a throw to Landry, who has two grabs, none bigger than the seven yard touchdown scoring catch by Jarvis Landry, his first touchdown catch of the 2012 season. Want to remind you folks to stay connected to your favorite LSU teams with the latest app for your smartphone. Get LSU athletics news, scores, rosters, live stats on your 
mobile device by downloading the LSU Sports mobile app. These official apps are available for free in the Android Marketplace and the iTunes Store. Visit www.lsusports.net slash apps for all the details. And we take a look at the USA Today Top Ten. And just as in the coaches poll, LSU is number two right behind their SEC counterpart, Alabama, USC, Oregon, Oklahoma, rounding out the top five. And Florida State, Georgia, West Virginia, South Carolina, and Michigan State. There's your top ten. And look at the impressive showing so far here in the early season by the Southeastern Conference. Take a look at the upcoming season. We've mentioned tonight so far, this that game kind of halfway in between, where LSU gearing up for SEC play, taking on Auburn. And what a game today if you're a fan of last-second heroics as Auburn, in overtime, pulls off the victory over UL Monroe. Yes, folks, in overtime. That's where LSU will be next week. And you see the rest of the schedule, Towson, back home here in Tiger Stadium and then on the road for Florida back home for South Carolina back on the road for one of the new members of the South St uh, Southeast Conference and that of course Texas A&M before their bye week on the 27th purple and gold fans sticking around here see what happens here in this second half good look there at Mettenberger in his first half numbers 9 to 13 for 117 Two touchdowns, Renee, but it was that one interception that has just really shown up on the scoreboard tonight. And that was a mental uh, mistake by Metberg. He really, really just stared his receiver down and just uh, gave away the way he was going with the ball. And that's something that I'm sure he'll work on. Uh, he just didn't look off the receiver. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, something he'll learn with experience. He's getting better. He's getting more, more calm, more poise, and, you know, all those type of things. But it's, it's the little mistakes, and that was one, that interception. So LSU will have the football here to start the second half, leading 28-14. to 14. And, you know, we talk about uh, some of the players around the conference, Renee, who are those impact players that you've talked about. And uh, obviously, Mettenberger right there as he uh, gears up for the second half. But there are some real, real good ones. There's a pretty hefty list with Mettenberger and Mills on there. We look at Evan Boyum as a, uh, these are all true freshmen, a lot of young guys, Darrell Beckham. Green Beckham, whatever receiver he's going to be. Mettenberger right there. Jalen Mills, a couple of young guys. Now, Mettenberger didn't get a lot of playing time last year. That's why I got him on this list. Jalen Mills, true freshman, what a player he's going to be. Greg Robinson, you may recognize, and a Thibodeau starting left tackle for Auburn. You'll see him next week against the Tigers. Bull Wallace, he could be very special at Ole Miss, a junior college transfer. And T.J. Yeldon, if you don't know about him for the, uh, for the uh, Crimson Tide of Alabama, boy, is he going to be good. And Johnny Manziel. Freshman quarterback at Texas A&M. They think he could be special as well. Interesting year in the SEC this year. You know, there's always some players who kind of come and get on the radar. And uh, there are quite a few young players that, as you say, Renee, really jump out this year who, who really can be major impact players. And I think this is kind of the year of the younger player making the bigger splash. And that's a good look at, J at Mills. And, yes, he can certainly be a special player. Jalen Mills. And another guy I didn't mention is... Cyrus Kunja, a left tackle, uh, Richard uh, Southmore rather, left tackle for the Alabama Crimson Tide. He's sharing that line with three future number one draft choices at Alabama with NFL draft choices. But good look right there at, at Jalen Mills, and boy, he's going to be good. And he has an interception to his credit thus far coming to this game, and he reminds me of a Travis Daniels, you may recall, played for LSU, seventh year in the NFL. And you talked about Mills, the SEC Freshman of the Week. In the uh, after an impressive performance last week. Take a look at that scoreboard. We mentioned the Auburn final in overtime. That is LSU's next opponent, Vanderbilt, really putting one on the chin on Presbyterian. And Alabama, the top-ranked team in the land, uh, just continues to contribute to the tumble and fall of Arkansas. 52-0 today. And Texas A&M, uh, impressive win over SMU. Always uh, interesting to kind of watch this year to see how the new additions to the SEC, Texas A&M and Missouri, do against the SEC competition, and that's coming up straight ahead. And, you know, if Auburn would have lost today, this would have been the first time since 1950 that 
on the plane. They were all in three. They jumped over a snake, if you will, and, and came away with their first win of the season. And Gene Chizik lives to fight another day. That he does. So we're getting set for third quarter action here in Baton Rouge. Number two, LSU, 28-14 over the Vandals of Idaho. Not the first meeting between these two schools. They met back in uh, 1998. LSU won that one 53-20. And this will not be the first trip and only trip to, uh, it's the first, but not the only trip, I should say, to the great state of Louisiana for the Vandals of Idaho. They'll come back in about one month here to uh, take on Louisiana Tech. Ford is going to field that one after dropping it at the three. Across the 10, got a block. Across the 20, 25, and now across the 30-yard line to about the 32. Nice little return there for Mr. Ford, giving 29 yards. And uh, the Tigers, pretty good field position here to start things off in the second half. There's the possessions for LSU. And you can see not a single drive, more than six plays. You know, Matt Berger certainly uh, wants to come out and, and be interesting to see what the first couple of plays may be. I'm sure it'll be a safe play, but Matt Berger's got to get back and sink. Pretty good game thus far, 9 out of 13 for 117 and Taylor scores. Mettenberger under center will throw on first down. Pass to the near side, Blue. And Blue across the 40, nice second effort. And a nice pickup of nine, so it'll be second and just one now for LSU. And we talked about Alfred Blue. What You know, his second cousin was George Jefferson. I don't know if people realize that. He's become a complete back. He's not just a, a guy, a speed guy. Good receiver, good blocker, can run between the tackles. And once again, Blue gets the carry across midfield. Not quite. They're going to say he... Made it down to about the 49-yard line. Blue a little slow to get back up. Matt got the wind knocked out of him. He came down kind of hard. Uh, Look like his leg may be favoring his left leg right now. So uh, Kenny Hilliard scoots into the game and take his place. Tonight's third quarter presented by Capital One, the official bank of LSU Athletics. And Kenny Hilliard was the scoring official scorer last year for the Tigers. Every time he got in the red zone, you can bet that Kenny Hilliard was going to get the ball. Mettenberger feeling the pressure, stepping back. And now he'll tuck it in and scramble and slide to midfield. So after all that, give him about a gain of one. When he came out of uh, junior college, he had some opportunities to go to some schools like Alabama, Arizona, Cincinnati, Louisville, and Ole Miss. He chose the Tigers, much to the delight of Les Miles, as you see uh, them addressing Alfred Blue's injury. But, uh, you know, Mettenberger really has come a long way, and he's really, really, he dropped some weight. He was a little heavy when he first arrived, but uh, he's really come a long way, especially in the film room. 6'5 and 230 pounds. Mettenberger gives to Hilliard, trying to find some room to the outside. No way, Jose. Aaron Grimes, the senior coming up from the left cornerback position, makes the tackle for the loss. And you can credit Mulga. With uh, kind of breaking this up a little bit, number 55, he slowed it out, strung it out, and allowed his teammates, he just kind of strung it out. You see he stripped the interference and allowed his teammates to string it out and make the tackle for a loss. So, uh, nice play. Good look right there, Aaron Grimes. And uh, you talk about Monga, and uh, boy, talk about an uh, offseason for him, number 55. We'll get a shot of him uh, as we get an opportunity to, and we'll talk about that. Mettenberger, pass incomplete to Ford on the near side. You talk about Monga, number 55 for Idaho on this defense, changed his number in the offseason to number 55, and that, Renee, was to honor uh, his cousin, Junior Seau, yeah, he uh, so tragically passed away here just a few months ago. And he was also related to Moise Tatupu, also a former USC Trojan, and that was nice to honor him with wearing his jersey number. From La Mesa, California, home among them. Wing, punting, and a boomer, and that one's going to go out of bounds at the six-yard line. 
A pretty punt, just what the Tigers ordered, 47 yards on the punt for Wing. And we'll be back to Tigers Stadium in a moment after this network break. 12-24 remaining here in the third quarter, 28-14. The second-ranked Tigers of LSU leading the Vandals of Idaho. As the official bank of LSU Sports, Capital One Bank is extremely proud to cheer on our beloved Tigers in every game and every sport from the entire Capital One family. Go Tigers! Capital One Bank, the official bank of LSU Athletics. Brad Wing and the Tigers doing what they needed to do. And they've got Idaho pinned back near their own end zone here on the first possession of this third quarter from the Vandals. Idaho 0-2 coming in after a hard-fought loss at Bowling Green last Saturday. And the give is to Bass. Bass still on his feet. Across the 25 to the 28-yard line. And good speed for the transfer from Arizona State as he kind of kicked it into gear and uh, slid past the LSU defensive secondary uh, and into the secondary. We He's talked about how he gained 30 pounds. He just bowled over Eric Reed for a nice pickup on that first down run by Bass. You see the possession chart for Idaho. And you can see... Not a lot of movement, but they've really done the right things at the right times to capitalize here against LSU tonight. Give to the near side, and uh, that is James Baker, the junior out of Deerfield, Florida. And not much room for him as Minter steps up to make the tackle for LSU. And Minter, you know, he's an interesting guy. He came to LSU uh, because of John Chavis and because of, of the linebacker. Reputation, reputation that LSU has. He can play all three linebacker spots, and that really, really helps because not only can he fill in, but he knows what everyone needs to do their responsibilities. And the junior really has stepped up major this year. Second and 13, and the pass overthrown to the far side as Blackman missing the target. I want to remind you tonight's third quarter presented by Capital One, the official bank of LSU athletics. Now Simon, another cornerback that uh, they have a lot of hope for here at Tigers, a junior at Eunice. He was a four-year starter at Eunice and big tall, 6'3", 187. What a talent he is. Good look there at Dominique Blackman coming into the game, completing 81% of his passes. His first career start last week was a big one. 0 for 4 on third downs tonight. Another turnover. LSU coming up with the football. Will it be for a touchdown? And the answer is yes. LeVar Edwards coming up with the football and taking it 22 yards to the house for the LSU Tigers touchdown. LeVar Edwards, what a story. He is out of Desire Academy, Gretna, Louisiana, who came to the Tigers. The reason why he wears number 89, he thought it'd be a tight end. <laughs> he knows what to do when he gets his hands on the ball and brings it back, broke a tackle, and LeVar Arrington, and when he steps up and spells Mingo or Sam Montgomery, there's no drop-off for the defensive end senior out of Desire Street. Well, we'll officially call it 23 yards, and that puts LSU up 34, and now Olimar makes it 35 to 14. So the Tigers' defense getting the job done in a big, big way here tonight. Edwards getting the touchdown. It's not the first by the defense. And we'll be back to Tigers Stadium in just a moment after this local break. Big defensive score for LSU. Puts the second-ranked Tigers up now 35-14 to 14 in the third quarter. Visit your local Kia dealer, Barker Kia or Lakeshore Kia. Kia, a dream car for real life, combining elegance, performance, and technology. LaVar Edwards, the senior out of Desire Academy in New Orleans, Renee, comes up with a beautiful defensive play right here. And the defense contributes their second touchdown of the evening. And look, DeVar Edwards 
What athleticism. He dropped 35 pounds, so he's a little light on his feet. Rose a couple of juke moves here into the end zone and dragged Blackman with him for a score. He's got to be happy. That's his first touchdown of his career. And wow, the would-be tight end finally shows why Les Miles should have had, had him catching passes instead of returning interceptions for touchdowns. Ain't that the truth? Look at that. When was the last time that happened, Renee? Wow, against Arkansas State. Ooh, 91. It's been a while. What a while. That's right. The two interceptions tonight by LSU. Matching the season total coming into this game. And that one's going to be taken one yard deep. And that is Bertong, Beltong, I should say. And Beltong, not much room for him to run as he's hit hard once he gets across the 10-yard line. I should say the 15-yard line. And, and uh, special teams, Renee, have been very impressive tonight. Daniel Hunter, that young man right there, number 94, what a future he has. Talk to some of the older offensive linemen. He's out of Katy, Texas. He's got a, he's a true freshman, number 94 defensive end. I think he has all the, all the uh, tools to be one of the special defensive ends at LSU. So Blackman once again stepping in. 10.52 remaining third quarter. Big Junior out of Carson, California, just making his second collegiate starter. It was a big one last week against Bowling Green. Put up some uh, very impressive numbers. Pass uh, over to the far side. And that's going to be a penalty hitting above the shoulders? I would think. Mike Scott, the intended. Are they going to protect players now? And that may have been a hit above the shoulders. Here's well, Jason MacArthur. Personal foul. Number 24 defense. Contact with a defenseless player above the shoulders. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Therald Simon. And, of course, uh, Renee, as you alluded to, a lot of focus on those types of hits. Uh, officials really, really keeping their eye open for those. And, and that's the kind of things that LSU can't be not, cannot be making these mental errors. That was just a mental lapse that cannot be duplicated. And I'm sure uh, John Chavis is going to address that with Simon after the game. Blackman, 12 of 18 tonight, but, of course, those three interceptions. And the pass to the near side is caught. And uh, hanging on to it is Michael Legrone, who's got one of those touchdown catches tonight for the Vandals of Idaho. Legrone with four catches thus far, and yeah, that touchdown was major in the first half. Legrone is a big, big target, and we said he used to play defensive end, so he's got big size, tough. Good look at John Chavis right there, defensive coordinator coming over from Tennessee. He loves Tiger Town. This is a great place for him, great fit. Got to be happy tonight. His defense has, for the most part, played very, very well. For that last touchdown, I who scored, of course, they, following an interception, they were deep in LSU territory, so uh, that wasn't much of a challenge. From the shotgun, Blackman unloads it before getting hit. Pass complete to Najee Lovett. Lovett, the leading receiver for the Vandals. Coming off that huge performance last night, where, or last week, where he had 10 catches, 128 yards against Bowling and Green. And Jamario Rasco out of Evangel High School, really came down with credit. Blackman for staying strong in the pocket and delivering the pass, but Rasco took a little bit out on, on, uh, on that hit, and uh, nice pressure for the completion. Another third down situation, Idaho. 0 for 4 on third downs, and that pass incomplete. Fast. Actually, I think it was thrown backward, and they're going to rule that as a lateral. So another unsuccessful third down conversion attempt for the Vandals. And LSU is enthusiastically ready to get the football back. Make it 0 for 6 on uh, third downs. Well, the Tiger faithful are hoping that maybe the Tigers can wear down the Vandals, uh, leading by 21 points right now, and Odell Beckham deep. We'll see what the Tigers can muster up with his next drive with Mettenberger. Haven't seen Rivers. I'm sure most fans, LSU fans, were anticipating seeing Philip Rivers, or Stephen Rivers, I should say, in this game. Cowan booting it, and Beckham pushed back to the 23-yard line. 
stays on his feet after getting hit a couple of times, and he'll make it to the 29-yard line, which is where the Tigers of LSU will take over a 48-yard punt and an 8-yard return. We'll be back. LSU 35-14 over the visiting Vandals. More LSU football after this local break. Back in Death Valley. Second-ranked LSU with a fairly commanding lead now over the Vandals of Idaho. Tiger fans, when it comes to quality and M. PG miles per gallon. Chevy is MVP with 10 models that get 30 miles per gallon or better and quality that beats the competition as sure as the Tigers will beat theirs. For fuel economy and quality, shop your Lake Charles area Chevy dealers. Good luck right there at Vidal Alexander. He's 6'6", 350, lost 30 pounds. He's out of Buford, Georgia. They think he can be special. He ragdolls defensive line. When I say ragdoll, you ever see a dog with a with a ragdoll in his mouth? By the way, he shakes it. He is powerful. True freshman, 6'6", 350. He's going to be a good one. Mettenberger leading the offense. That's Hilliard. And Hilliard, nice chunk. And he's free as well. Inside the 35, can he outrun the Vandals? And the answer is yes, Hilliard. 71 yards. How did he get through for the touchdown? Wow. I don't know how that happened. I thought the Vandals had Kenny Hilliard after a gain of about five or six, but he squirted through, and he was off to the races 71 yards to put the Tigers up now 41 to 14. And talk about explosiveness. LSU has just blown up in the second half. What a run by Kenny Hilliard, losing those 10 pounds. Sure gave him a little speed, didn't it? Need to see that one again. I do not know how he got through as Alamo punches that one through. We've got to see that one from like an end zone angle. 71 yards, Kenny Hilliard, the sophomore out of Patterson, looking like Dalton Hilliard there, too. And he ran for 106 touchdowns. He just runs over the safety. That's bad. And I'll tell you what, he keeps on going. Nice little move right here. Just sidesteps the safety. Keeps on going. And that is a lot of speed for a 6-foot, 231-pound. Great blocking by Leo Collins. But here he did a lot of this on his own, running over a would-be tackler and just running away from the competition. And chasing him was Sabi. But look at this, coming right into your TV set. And Hilliard lowers the boom, lowers the shoulder, and he's running downhill. Explosive run. He shows he's not just a power back, but has a lot of speed and juice. Wow, what a nice run by Kenny Hilliard. Boy, Tad Thompson was actually the defender who popped Hilliard just about five or six yards into that run. These Vandals wear a lot of the same numbers. Uh, so we've got matching numbers on offense and defense. It's Tad Thompson, the strong safety, and Hilliard just bounced right off and knocked him down and, and as we say, off to the races, Renee. He was a three-time 3A state champ for a state uh, MVP in Louisiana at Patterson High School. Some good bloodlines as well, a relative of uh, the former NFL and New Orleans Saints standout, Dalton Hilliard. Louisiana Cat is a proud sponsor of LSU Athletics. Louisiana Cat, your statewide Caterpillar dealer. You know, Hilliard's averaging 7.2 yards per carry. Alfred Blue coming into the game 7.5. That's pretty stout when you got a couple of backs averaging over 7 yards per carry. And that run is going to help us average immensely in this game. You're not kidding. Six carries now, 83 yards for Hilliard. Of course, 72 of those came just moments ago. And that's got to really deflate, suck the air out of that uh, Idaho defense. We'll see if, if the offense can respond. Blackman, who, who signed with Washington and then transferred to, the, to uh, Old Dominion before transferring to Idaho, uh, as you said, got a second start and he looked pretty good today, I must say. So Harrison to handle the kickoff duties. And that one taken at the goal line. And out across the 10, spinning and swarmed over at about the 
12-yard line by the LSU special teams tonight, which has uh, put forth an outstanding effort. Tonight's third quarter presented by Capital One, the official bank of LSU athletics. Seth Fruit from Notre Dame High School came over to stop another special team's Dynamo. And boy, I tell you, LSU takes such pride in uh, being on a uh, on a covering kicks, covering punts, things like that. And uh, a lot of players here have made careers. Steve Rehouse comes to mind. Guys who've made careers uh, covering kicks. What about uh, the name Nato? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Put him in the same category as Steve Rehouse. I'll say that. And to the ground on first down. And maybe a couple of yards down there as Bass. Can't find a seam. There have not been a lot of them tonight. You know, Benny Logan has worked on a lot of things, but his hands and quickness, as you get a look at Les Miles, Benny Logan's worked on his hands and quickness and, and anticipating the snap and anticipating where the ball is going. His favorite player is Justin Tuck, but, he, but Benny Logan credits Britain that is former LSU Tiger, now with the coach and helping him kind of learn the ropes and become the player he is. Baker the lone back right now for Idaho. On second and ten to the air. And the pass well short. I think uh, a receiver ran a wrong route or Blackman just read that one wrong because there was no Vandal receiver anywhere nearby. LSU does a good job of disguising their defense, maybe confusing Blackman a little bit. Sam Montgomery that time picking up receiver coming off the line. And uh, Sam, uh, just an example, he used the skills uh, of covering the receiver. Ronald Martin, big night. A couple of interceptions, went for a touchdown. Boy, what a big night he's had. Three interceptions in all for LSU tonight. Third and ten. As Handley in the backfield. But definitely a throwing situation. For the Vandals, under pressure, drops it off across the middle. And enough to get a first down as Handley makes the reception and makes a nice run afterward. Gain of 17 on the play. That's a good and, play call. And the first third down conversion of the night for the Vandals in six previous tries. You want to slow down a pass rush, a little screen pass, Brooke. That was a nice play call at the right time. Back to the air, short drop, and Blackman's pass is complete. As Veltung makes the grab. So as nice tackle by Jalen Mills that time, the freshman. And boy, they say he takes a pad and pencil everywhere he goes, always taking notes, always asking questions, and he gets better every day. He's one, he, one thing he prides himself on, he's not a big guy, six foot one eighty-five, but he likes to jam the receiver. He's strong enough to do that. Works on it very, very well. And uh, he makes tremendous advances. Very confident. Makes a mistake, Doug. Moves on to the next day and lets it behind him. You know, he's got a short memory, a good mark, and a good quarterback. Can leave the lone back. And instead, passing situation complete to Legrone. Legrone's had his hand on the football plenty here tonight. And they'll spot that one right about 38-yard line. Looks like about a yard short of the first down for the Vandals. Blackman is delivering the ball very quickly. He's kind of tough to get to. In fact, the Tigers have not. And that'll be enough for a first down as Clayton Hamid makes the catch and moves the stick so a couple of third down conversions for Blackman and the Vandals here in this third quarter I mean it's only his second catch of the season he was a 6'5 200 pound wide receiver arrives here and they put 45 pounds on him and say you're a tight end but uh, he's done a good job blocking and showed some good hands there Blackman completing 18 of 24 for 131 Three interceptions have done him in so far tonight. And that pass complete to the near side as Jerry Level makes the grab. Again, Blackman showing strong in the pocket. He's going to get hit here, and he just stays in there as Rasco and Aguirre just unload on him, and he completes the pass. That's really... That shows a lot of confidence, a lot of toughness. 
Second down and two, no backs behind Blackman. Tigers showing blitz, and we've got whistles and flags. Before the snap, false start. Number 55 offense, five yard penalty, still second down. No shortage of those for the Vandals tonight, right before the end of the second quarter, just before the half. Idaho committed, what, three in a row? Yep. And that's the second one on Dallas Sandberg, the former shot putter out of Prescott Valley, Arizona. Les Miles has to be a little, feel a little bit better about what his team has done here, but you know, you don't want to count on defensive touchdowns. They've gotten two interceptions for scores here, but uh, it doesn't make a difference how you win the game, but he, he wants a little more productivity out of his offense. Handley in the backfield pass incomplete across the middle. Scott, the intended receiver. Nice job by the LSU defensive secondary. Eric Reed with the that hit. One away. Eric Reed, and you know, Ronald Martin was ready for his second touchdown as Eric Reed unloaded on him, and, and uh, that was a questionable call there. It's incomplete. Les Miles trying to politic a little bit. Can we take a look at that? Is there official? <laughs> so third and seven now. Handley, the lone back. Blackman, pass complete, and it's Handley once again. He's thrown to his backs quite a bit here tonight. A lot of that short stuff over the middle, Renee, has been successful for Idaho. And he's beating the pressure with those short, quick tosses. That's a nice game plan for Coach Rob Akey. Good look at him right there. And they're banging on the door of another opportunity for a first down. Officials discussing, but it would appear as though they've come up about a yard short. Illegal shift on the offense. Two players were in motion, did not get set. It's a five yard penalty from the previous spot. Still third down. As the official bank of LSU Sports, Capital One Bank, extremely proud to cheer on our beloved Tigers in every game and every sport from the entire Capital One family. Go Tigers! Capital One Bank, the official bank of LSU Athletics. You know, Dominic Blackman may not have the strongest arm, but he had he was 30 out of 37 for 352 yards against Bowling Green, and that make a difference how long the pass is. That is the, it's how far the, the play goes, and he may have a five-yard completion goes to 70 yards. So now third and 12, and another flag has been thrown, and I wouldn't be surprised if this one another false start. False start. Number 79 offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Spencer Beal, a 319-pound sophomore. A little early movement down there. You know, sometimes there's things that LSU could be doing uh, to confuse them. And also, Blackman may be changing the snap count a little bit, trying to confuse LSU. He may be confusing his own offensive lineman with the snap count or, or uh, going in a longer count. Not sure. So now third and 17. Blackman, short drop, pass is complete, and across the 45, they'll mark it at the 46-yard line. Love it on the receiving end, and not enough for the first down. So we will uh, expect to see the punting unit for the Vandals. And Jalen Mills shot off the edge with a little pressure, but again, Blackman beats the rush with a completion. Not enough for a first down, but did show a lot of... Hootspot, if you will. Hootspot, I like that. You know, Blackman, he's a big guy, Doug, but he was a good basketball player, and he thought that's where his future lied until, uh, you know, somebody said, why don't you try taking some snaps at quarterback? Beckham standing down on about the 14-yard line, getting ready to get a return. Hasn't had a great one so far tonight. And that one, a fair catch, so we won't see it on that one. The explosive Odell Beckham Jr., 41-yard punt. That off the foot of Bobby Cowan. 
Some big guys on that offensive line, Renee, and uh, one of the biggest, would you not say, in the country. It's the biggest in the SEC, second of biggest. They average 322.8 pounds per man. You know, and, and uh, Utah is the biggest in the uh, country. Wisconsin right behind them, which is historically always has a big lineman. You know, the, the offensive line has shrunk, if you can believe that, the last few years. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. And Shepard, the ball carrier for LSU. As uh, we are now inside three minutes to go. But look at the big guys up front. Renee, I understand that um, Air Force and Army are amongst the smallest. And uh, my spin, Renee, on the Air Force well, you, when you is, run that, well, they fly. And <laughs> it's weight restrictions. Well, you, when you run that beer and that option, uh, that's you got to have small small linemen. Let me just tell you something quick and interesting about the offensive linemen. They call themselves the bomb squad. And every day at practice, they put their hands together and before they break the huddle, they say bomb squad! On two! Kick! Kick! Boom! And that's their, that's their cheer. It's the offensive linemen. A close fraternity. A lot of camaraderie in that offensive line. They, I like they that. They cover each other a lot. And, uh, uh, you really got to be a special player to, to be an offensive lineman. Yeah, different breed. Different breed. But, yeah, uh, no question. Jarvis Landry there making the reception, the young sophomore out of Lutcher High School. I want to remind you, tonight's third quarter is presented by Capital One, the official bank of LSU Athletics. Ford in the backfield there with Mettenberger, and he gets the give. To the far side, penalty flag on the play, and spins it across the 45 to about the 46-yard line, but... You can almost bet your bottom dollar it's going to be a holding penalty on LSU. Holding, number 78 offense, 10-yard penalty, still second down. He's talking about Fidel Alexander, big freshman. Yeah, only ways. Uh, he's one of the small guys, isn't he? 350. You know, and the, the thing is, he's right. out of Buford, Georgia. When he came to LSU, when he committed to LSU, Doug, it was between Alabama and LSU, but he told me as a three-year-old, he lived in New Orleans. He moved to Georgia. He was always an LSU guy, and yeah, it's kind of tough to hide a 6'6", 350 frame, but his family are hardcore LSU people, so it was never much doubt as where he was headed to college. Good looking right there, and boy, he's got a great future. And 600-pound squat. He's a freshman. You know, we call a shot of him full screen. <laughs> Look at his birthday, April 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Check his birth certificate. He's a big one. Yeah, that he is. So second and long now after the penalty for LSU. Mettenberger, maybe a broken play, maybe not. That is Hilliard, and he squirts across the 25 to about the 26-yard line. Hilliard becoming more of a complete back. He was more of a blocking fullback last year at this time. You saw he evidenced by the nice run he made, that 71-yard scamper for a touchdown earlier this quarter. And Mettenberger looking big time deep, throwing downfield. Got the receiver, it's Beckham. And a, yes, it is a catch. Odell Beckham Jr., man, talk about a circus over-the-shoulder catch. That was huge for a gain of 47. And Odell Beckham flashing some big-time wheels on a goal route. Mettenberger, what a great touch throw. Watch this. 30 yards through the air. Make it 40 yards, 45 yards. And this is an unbelievably tough catch by Beckham. Back to live action to the near side. Landry has the reception. He's run out of bounds at the 13-yard line. So LSU once again on the move offensively. It's been a big second half. And now LSU by virtue of what they've already accomplished, 40 or more points in 13 of their last 17 games. Mettenberger, now Beckham again, and no gain on the play. Mettenberger, who boasts an 85-yard toss. He can throw the ball 85 yards in the air, but it's not so much about how far he can throw it, Doug. You know, what, what that tells me is when a guy can throw it that far, he can put a little zip on his out routes and the 30 and 40-yard outs and things like that. That was great touch, and... Really an outstanding throw. Timeout, Idaho. It's their first timeout of the half. It'll be a 30-second timeout. So just uh, seconds remaining here in this third quarter. And LSU once again threatening to score. LSU's Les Miles and his crew 
uh, really putting the offense together here in the second half. We've seen some big plays, and uh, the defense has been very solid. Another look here at Odell Beckham's big catch. And just a go route, and he's looking over his shoulder. This is extremely tough to look over your shoulder and make the catch. And uh, Mettenberger's reaction, huh, just another day at the office. 14 for 19, 191 yards for Mettenberger. What a nice night he's had, and a couple of nice catches, none bigger than that one right there by by uh, Odell Beckham. And that's got to be a confidence booster after all the drops last week. Well, Renee, uh, they put a score on the board here. Let's just assume this. How soon do you think we get a chance to see Stephen Rivers? I think a lot of people out there would love to get a look-see at him. Uh, I'm guessing. I would still think that uh, Ben Bird would come in again. It's a, a few ticks away for the end of the third quarter. I think you'll see him in the first series of the fourth quarter, and perhaps Rivers may come in after that. Hilliard, the lone tailback, I should say, but uh, one of two, obviously, back there. Passes complete to the near side, and still on his feet. What great effort by Jarvis Landry as he drags about three defenders down to the uh, one-yard line. And uh, it's covered in chalk in the process, but all worth the effort as the Tigers knocking on the door once again. Jarvis Landry, a guy who took number 80 because of the history of Tolliver, but what a knock by Mettenberger. He took it, delivered the pass, and still delivered the uh, completion. But we're talking about L Landry. Where's number 80 because of his predecessors, uh, Dwayne Bow and Terrence Tolliver. And Hilliard in the end zone loses the football, but I think they say touchdown. And yes, indeed. Kenny Hilliard, his second touchdown of the night. That one of a shorter variety, but it puts LSU up 48-14. to 14. And his sixth touchdown of the season, so he's leading the team in that category. Nice blocking on the left side of the line and interior line. Allow him to break the plane of the end zone. Hilliard came into the game, number three in the SEC in yards per game with just a little more than 93. And he's had a big, big night here as Alamal punches that one straight through. 49-14. Good look there at the sophomore from Patterson, Louisiana. So LSU with a commanding lead, and we'll be back with more. And fourth quarter action, you're watching Tiger Vision, and we'll be back after this network break. Welcome back to Death Valley in an explosive second half for the second-ranked Tigers, 49-14. Kenny Hilliard, a big night. Here's the shorter of two touchdowns. Nice blocking up front. He leaps over a would-be tackler into the end zone for a touchdown. And another look at it right here. Just great blocking as Wilford, Josh Wilford pulls from his right guard position and kicks out, allowing Kenny Hilliard to get into the end zone for a score. That that drive was a nice uh, drive. Nine plays, 87 yards, 2 minutes and 58 seconds off the clock. And that was aided by a 46-yard hookup between Mettenberger and Odell Beckham. So a big third quarter for LSU. And we take a look at the numbers right now. LSU 15 first downs. Look at the lack of yards on the ground for the Vandals. That LSU run defense has been impressive. Yeah, it was total yards, 367. Again, some big plays. They kind of gasped the Vandal defense. And that uh, Odell Beckham hookup with Mettenberger accounted for 46 of those. But Mettenberger is starting to get, uh, he's really in the zone right now. And had a, he's had a good evening. Uh, throwing the ball, completing 9, 14 pass out of 19 attempts for 191 yards, as we said. And uh, I think one more series, uh, I would expect Mettenberg to come in. It may be wrong, and, and you may see Rivers following that. The Tigers just have worn Idaho down, but a feisty group in the first half. You see Mettenberg is still warming up, so you would anticipate him returning. Haven't seen James Wright, you saw on the bench right there, number 82, who uh, has contributed seven catches this year for 90 yards, so I haven't seen him with any grabs. Lovett and Handley deep to return, and we get a shot there of Rivers warming up. And the big guy, 6'8", 225 pounds, and older brother's done just a little better than okay for himself in the National Football League, hasn't he, Renee? Well, he has, and, and I think one thing, we'll talk about Rivers if we do see him, how much he credits 
Coach Craig Dorf with how much he's improved his, his overall technique and his, his fundamentals. Off the foot of Hairston. And that one taken by Handley. And uh, he'll take the knee, wisely so. And so the Vandals, who twice pulled within seven points of LSU in the first half. And then LSU, of course, scoring that touchdown before the half. And it's been all LSU ever since. I want to remind you, tonight's fourth quarter is presented by Verizon. Dominique Blackman coming off his first career start against Bowling Green. He completed 30 of 37 passes, 352 yards. Uh, he's had a pretty good night here tonight against a very challenging LSU defense. And the Vandals go to the ground. And Baker, the ball carrier. Hunter there to make the stop for LSU. Uh, opportunity now, I think, Renee, also for a lot of these younger players to get some of those snaps that Les Miles talks so much about, that experience that only comes in game time uh, situations. We talked about Daniel Hunter, and he's going to be a special one. Chancey Aguirre, the Nigerian Nightmare, a senior on the flip side, on the other end, opposite end. And we got Eagle Ferguson and Anthony Johnson manning the tackle spots for the Tiger defense. Blackman throwing. Quick pass behind his intended receiver, who was Marquan Major. You know, the thing about Blackman, he's looked at a lot of zone defense that the uh, Tiger defense threw up today at him, and he's finding those little creases in those and uh, and that type of thing. Aguirre, another defensive end who's uh, teamed up with Lavar Edwards, and when they get on the field, there's no drop off from the starters Kiki Mingo and Sam Montgomery. But uh, really, Blackman's done a good job of finding that hole in the Tiger defense. Blackman rolling out, throws downfield just beyond the reach of uh, Ronald Martin. I know Martin was thinking, I might get myself another pick tonight. Well, he was thinking, he kind of misread that, where the ball was going and uh, just uh, couldn't come down with it. Jarvis Landry will return this punt. You see Martin right there, he wanted that one, Oh, he, he wanted it bad. Jarvis, Jarvis Landry has an excellent return skills. We'll see what he can do with this punt. Bobby Cowan. Standing at his own 15-yard line. 45-yard average tonight. His longest has been 52. This is a nice punt. And Beckham, no alternative. I'm sorry, check that. It is Landry. Landry with no alternative other than to uh, call the fair catch on that one after a 51-yard punt. And we'll be back to Tiger Stadium. We've got ourselves a local break. Second ranked LSU 49, the Vandals of Idaho 14 here early in this fourth quarter. Verizon, America's fastest 4G network and the official wireless provider of the LSU Tigers. You see Bentberger right there. You know, one thing is we see the offense come back in the field. We hadn't seen P.J. Lonergan since the early part of the game, and Elliot Porter has filled that role as the, as the center, and we're not sure there's any kind of serious injury to P.J. Lonergan. I would anticipate him not seeing uh, since we haven't seen him here. And uh, similar numbers for Mettenberger as he had against Washington. 15 of 20, 203 yards. Take away an interception, and uh, once again, a very, very solid performance by Mettenberger here tonight. Grabs the snap, Hilliard. Going to add to his total here tonight. He's up to the 35-yard line, and that's going to put Hilliard over the century mark here tonight. Good line blocking, good surge off the line of scrimmage by the offensive line, giving him an opportunity. Good block right there, great block right there by Vidal Alexander, allowing Hilliard to scoot up for a first down. Same play again. Nice play, nice play. Hilliard. So Hilliard making his contribution, and that puts him at 109 yards rushing here tonight. As LSU at this point, 
Tigers trying to run the clock and move on down the road as they face the Auburn Tigers at Auburn next week. Mettenberger once again gives to Hilliard and he's across the 45 to the 46 and that'll move the chains for LSU. It's that handoff to Hilliard, continues to pile up yardage and a lot of starters still in the game. Hurst, Leo Collins uh, still in the game for the Tiger offensive line. I want to remind you tonight's fourth quarter is presented by Verizon to the air and the pass is complete and it's Shepard on a gain of 13. Tough catch by Shepard shows him very good hands in the first quarter and another tough catch here is on a slant pattern the Shepard had to reach back and make an athletic grab nice catch and how about that a 49-14 they're doing the no huddle thing pass complete to the far side someone loses the helmet as coming up with the grab is Terrence McGee as the sophomore gets his first reception of 2012 and McGee who was converted from a running back and David Zabi took the worst of that hit and McGee has really flashed some skills as a wide receiver converted to such a crowded backfield moved him off the wide receiver to get him on the field and the sophomore from Franklin can show some good skills so now second and three for LSU Mettenberger from the shotgun and back to the ground and nowhere to go for Jeremy Hill as Jeremy Hill gets his first carry of 2012. The redshirt freshman out of Redemptorist High School right here in Baton Rouge. Much celebrated arrival of Jeremy Hill. And he's got some skill, 6'2", 235. Boy, he is a pounder. All these, good look at him right there. He can, he can do it all. They think he can be a very special back for the Tigers. He can do it all. Power, speed, good blocker, good receiver. Connor Neighbors also in the offensive backfield for LSU. Once again, it's Hill. And he'll run out of bounds. Good enough for the, for the first down. And you can see uh, what an incredible high school career he had, Renee. Over, you know, 36 touchdowns a senior year. And that's great. Over 7.5 yards per carry. 2,260 yards and Boy, he can be a special player, and it's been tough getting on the field with all the talent in that backfield. It is unbelievable. We call it a bevy of backs for LSU. Once again, it's Hill. You know, blocking for him is kind of neighbors, and I don't know if people recognize that name. He kind of changed tradition by coming to LSU. His brother Wesley plays at Alabama. His dad was a center there, and his granddad, uh, the late Billy Neighbors, was a College Hall of Famer, all went play for the Crimson Tide. And there he is, good looking right there. Connor Neighbors out of Huntsville, Alabama, 5'11, 236. And it's kind of tough when Alabama plays LSU with his family. Who they cheer for? I think, uh, I think it's going to be, well, I'll give you an answer. Hill, once again, nice leap as uh, he is inside the five yard line, showing some great athleticism. I think uh, the answer there is going to be LSU, Renee. Well, you know, when it comes time, but that's a nice block by Connor Neighbors down the field, but also a nice block by Russell Shepard down the field, allowing Hill to almost score as I, can, I would anticipate he'll give the Hill right here to see if he can punch it in. This is the 10th play of the drive, and I'm going to venture to say that's the longest drive for LSU tonight. And guess who? It's Hill. And he tumbles into the end zone. Touchdown. Little gymnastics there to get into the end zone. Hill gets another score for LSU to make it a 55-14 game. Watch this block by Russell Shepard, number 10 on the edge. A very difficult block. Jeremy Hill, kind of neighbors, but, well, you can't right there. He just stayed with his man long enough. They kept them on the line of scrimmage on the goal line where Hill just went airborne to get into the end zone. But Shepard did a good job occupying his man. Alamon has had a busy leg tonight and contributes once again. And so LSU, which in the first half just could not shake these pesky vandals, 
have done so in the second half, 55-14. We'll be back with more from Tiger Stadium after we take this local break. Been an explosive second half for LSU, 56-14 now the score here early in the fourth quarter. LSU returns to Tiger Stadium on Saturday, September 29th, when LSU hosts the Towson Tigers. For the latest news and game day info, log on to lsusports.net slash game day. And you want to head to the PMAC for women's basketball this season with head coach Nikki Caldwell, the Lady Tigers in 10 on using all 94 feet of the court again this season. Season tickets start at just 50 bills. Log on to lsusports.net slash WBBTix for more information. A lot of good things coming up here in the LSU world. Take a look at the scoring drive. 10 plays, 78 yards, 401 off the clock. And that young man right there, Mr. Hill, getting his first career touchdown. Hopefully the first of many, the fans think. And He's a uh, much heralded arrival here in Tiger Stadium. And that one will not get a return. As Lovett decides otherwise. I want to remind you tonight's fourth quarter is presented by Verizon. Didn't see quite that many smiles on the LSU bench in the first half, Renee, but we're seeing plenty of them now. Well, you know, it's funny. And, uh, Literally. Yeah. <laughs> You know, now we're up by 42 points. I would think the fans can take back a little review over here. Now you can see LSU's done a fantastic job defensively of shutting down that Idaho running attack. And talk about a balanced offense. How about uh, that, Renee? Uh, can't get much closer no, than that. You're right about that. Same uh, one-yard difference. And so the Vandals and Blackman once again pass uh, just a bit short. <laughs> Scott, the intended receiver on that one. Some new faces in there. Debo Jones uh, at the at linebacker. Jamari Orasco. Neil. Under there. Good look at Debo Jones. Boy, he's going to have a, a great future with the Tigers. He, you know, he will make 18 to the day after the Alabama game. 17-year-old youngster doing a good job with the Tigers. 17 years old. You know, that's, that's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Hanley gets the carry. Inside 10 minutes to go. LSU looking forward to getting some of the younger players some uh, snaps here tonight as they get ready to take on the Auburn Tigers in their first SEC match of the year. And you, you saw Debo Jones, number 45. You see him in the screen. He committed to Nebraska, Bo Pelini and company, and they thought they had him in... LSU hadn't offered a, a scholarship to him. When they did, he jumped on a Tiger offer, and LSU's glad he did. Timeout, Idaho. That's their second timeout of the half. This will be a history-making night tonight. Coach Miles didn't want to talk much about it early in the game. 40th consecutive non-conference win tonight for LSU, setting an NCAA record. We'll be back after we take a network break here on Tiger Vision. LSU just nine and a half minutes away from setting an NCAA record with their 40th consecutive non-conference win here in Tiger Stadium tonight. Want to remind you, you got to visit your local Kia dealer, Walker Kia or Kia of Lake Charles. Kia, a dream car for real life, combining elegance, performance, and technology. Wow. Hey, listen, players aren't the only ones uh, getting hurt. When you're a trainer, you got to be open for any, almost anything. And uh, injury by the official. He's, he's still, he's still going to go. You didn't see him going on a cart to the uh, locker room, so he's going to suck it up a little bit. Didn't see the thumbs up or no. anything like that either. He's good. Yeah, good to go. Third and nine for the Vandals. Blackman under some pressure, and that would bat it down. That one. Uh, wow, look at that Western Kentucky game. The Hilltoppers may be a nail in the coffin of Joker Phillips. You know, Kentucky football, you know, they it's just kind of waiting around for basketball to start, and that's not a good sign in the Bluegrass State when Western Kentucky can pull a quick one on the Wildcats in football. 
South Carolina taking care of business against Alabama Birmingham. And so now fourth down. And it's Landry back as he stands about uh, stands at his own 28-yard line. Prepared to make a return here. Doesn't look like it'll happen on this one as that one bounces and uh, is downed at the 33-yard line. That's where LSU will take over after a punt of 42 yards. Here's the SEC scoreboard tonight. Mississippi State uh, taking care of Troy. Not an easy one there. Georgia, big win over Florida Atlantic and Texas leading in the second quarter against the Rebels of Ole Miss in, in Oxford. And i got a trivia question for you. Here you go with Rivers now taking the snap. We Even believe Rivers? so. Uh, I think it's Rivers who's been given the, given the reins, so to speak, Renee. And there he goes. 6'8", 225-pound redshirt freshman out of Athens, Alabama. Brother's done just a little more than all right for himself in the NFL. And you see the numbers from high school as uh, no pass is thrown for Rivers as an LSU Tiger. And it's to the ground first and across the 35 to the 37-yard line. And that's Jeremy Hill. We do have a penalty flag on the play. We're on a thinking caps here. Doug, I got a brain twister for you. Idaho won. They have had much success most recently, but uh, back in 89... Illegal shift on the offense. Two players in motion at the snap. The penalties decline. It'll be second down. Back in 89 and 92, the Vandals captured the Big Sky Conference uh, record. Or, you know, they won the Big Sky Conference in 89 and 92 by a coach who now resides in the SEC. Give us some thought who that may be. A coach who now resides in the SEC led the Vandals to the Big Sky Conference title in 89 and 92 with Doug Nussmeyer at quarterback who's now the uh, offensive coordinator. I thought you were going to let me guess. Oh, well, go ahead and give us some thought. I, I thought it was Doug Nussmeyer. No, Doug Nussmeyer was the quarterback. Oh, he was the quarterback. Oh, Number okay. 73 offense. So you're asking. Five yard penalty, still second down. So you're asking who the coach was. Who was the coach for the Vandals? God, where's that Jeopardy music when you need it? We look at Chris Davenport, who's the new left tackle. Converted defensive tackle on a man's field. But uh, give us some thought and see if you can come up with uh, who that might be. You want me to text it to you? Uh, well, you can. Uh, it's just like a text to win. Shout it thing? out. Who's really? Do a shout out. Now resides in the SEC as a head coach. Give it some thought. All right, I'll work on that one, Renee. Give straight ahead. And once again, Jeremy Hill. Hill's gotten some good reps here tonight. Got his first touchdown and had an opportunity to get his hands on the football. Six carries, 37 yards. You know, also, you've got an offensive line. you got Elliot Porter in there and Ben Dom Dominique at left guard. Uh, at left tackle, you got uh, Davenport, a converted tackle. And, you know, also a converted defensive tackle and also uh, still in the game, Vidal Alexander, who had a pancake block on that Jeremy Hill touchdown earlier in the, in the fourth. Rivers going to the air, deep downfield, open receiver, Shepard can't quite connect. A uh, good effort there by Shepard and a pretty well-thrown pass just slightly off the mark. And Shepard on a go route. Rivers aired out, show what kind of arm he has. And, and you know, he has come over the top. He had a little bit more of a delivery like his brother, Philip, But he comes more over the top. You can see nice throw over the top, nice delivery. And Shepard just can't hold it. Almost, in, boy, that's a close one. I don't know if it hit the ground, but uh, that was a nice athletic potential interception by Jordan. But Rivers showed some nice uh, delivery, and he, he credits Coach Craig Thorne with helping him with the throwing motion. And so fair catch is called by Lovett. 51-yard punt. And we want to remind you, tonight's fourth quarter is presented by Verizon, America's fastest 4G Network and the official wireless provider of the LSU Tigers. Oh, did you come up with the coach yet? Who the former Idaho coach who won the 
Big Sky in 89 and 92 now resides in the SEC. How about John L. Smith from Arkansas? There you go. I was going to be your guess right that. Yeah. Right, well, I was going to. See, if you would have said interim coach or something like well, that, he, he would have given it yeah. away. It away after the, after Might be more interim than we first thought. Well, the pasting Alabama put on him today, that's uh, right now things are not going well for the Razorbacks. Handley getting the carry without their quarterback. Tyler Wilson was absent today. Corey Thompson, another freshman who looks good. They really like him a lot as a safety. And Boy, so many young guys playing. playing uh, and, you know, we talk about Les Miles, and he says they recruit guys who expect to play as true freshmen. No more of this redshirting and learning two or three years down the road. You know, Quan Alexander's another one right there out of Oxford, Alabama. True freshmen. Uh, very athletic. And, you know, these guys come in and expect to play as true freshmen. Daniel Hunter, another dude played by number 94. The Handley getting the carry and not much to go. Here's the consecutive wins record that LSU is going to set tonight. And it's just, you know, it's kind of a quiet thing. We talk about it, but no bells, no whistles, no fireworks. Definitely not the case, but 40 consecutive non-conference regular season victories put LSU at the top. That's going to be 40 tonight, and that, folks, is a NCAA record. And not the only record that LSU will set tonight. This will be the 20th straight win in Tiger Stadium, so that will be an LSU record as well. And another interception for LSU. And coming up with the pick is Jalen Mills. The SEC Freshman of the Week. Oh, my, what a performance as he hauls that one in and returns at 15 yards. A bit underthrown, but the fans are supportive, are happy about that. And as Blackman drops back and delivers the ball, and Mills just made a great break in front of the, the pass intended receiver and returns it for a nice pickup. And, and again, Jalen Mills, on man, man on man, mano a mano, on Lovett and comes up with yet another interception the fourth for the Tigers in this game the second on the season for Mills and LSU back to the ground Hill they get another freshman number 85 Dylan Gordon out of John Curtis wow what a host of true freshmen and redshirt freshmen that we're seeing tonight Tonight's fourth quarter is presented by Verizon. There's the turnovers, the LSU lone interception by Mettenberger, and that resulted in a touchdown. Other than that, LSU, two of those almost turnover free. Four interceptions, two of those produced points. Interceptions returned for scores. Back to the ground, Hill trying to get to the outside, and he's inside the 10, and they'll spot that at the 8. And, you know, Hill doesn't run like a 6'2", 235-pound back. He just doesn't look that big. He's got a lot of wiggle, and, uh, you know, he, he runs well, can bounce it outside, can plant that foot and go. He's kind of a one-cut kind of guy. Is it jello in his boots kind of thing? A little jello in his boots, yeah, yeah, a little wiggle. And a uh, good look at Rivers right there. But, uh, you know, Rivers... But I not even, a ping-pong ball in the bathroom. Not a ping, that's, that's a whole different thing. Right, no. gotcha. But Rivers, you know, I asked him about... Uh, we talked earlier this season about... Why didn't he go to uh, North Carolina State where his brother went? He said he was in third grade when his brother was in college, so hardly remembers that. Third grade, best five years of my life. Straight up the gut, and that's Hill. Is he in? No. Yes, he is. The referee on the far side gave it the go. Eight-yard touchdown run and the second touchdown of the night for Jeremy Hill, the redshirt freshman from right here in Baton Rouge. And uh, it's 60-plus on the night now for LSU, 62-14. to 14. Good blocking up front by Ben Domang and Elliott Porter and company, allowing Hill the room to surge off the line of scrimmage, and Hill gets his second score. He's got to be feeling good. Look less miles. This is what we told you you can do. And long, long night for the Idaho defense. The most points by the LSU Tigers. Since 1997, put 63 on the board tonight. And look at the way they come up the line of scrimmage. Look, they just dominated, pushing them flat back, flat back into the end zone, allowing Hill. Boy, what a block. Look at that right there. Great block right there by Elliott Porter. 55, he just flat back the defensive lineman. 
just look at that drive. That is outstanding driving. Surge off the line of scrimmage for the offensive line. Elliot Porter. What a great block there. And just three plays needed. 18 yards. A minute 23 off the clock. Hill getting his second touchdown of the night. And as we say, the most points for the LSU Tigers since a game against Kentucky back in November in 1997 when they also scored 63. Well, you got to feel good now. This game started kind of slow for the Tigers and kind of caught a little momentum here in the second half. What a difference. Second half. It's just they came roaring back and just kept Idaho in check with four minutes and 35 seconds left to go. Rivers getting some good, uh, and you need your back of quarterback to get some meaningful snaps and let them air it out a little bit because you never know if, uh, if for some reason Mettenberger uh, took a shot or had to sit down for a series or two. You need someone to step in who uh, has been there before. Very impressed with the backups that we've seen on both sides of the ball wearing purple and gold tonight. Haven't seen anything else in the quarterbacks change for Idaho, although Logan Bushnell and Taylor Davis are backups. Wonder if we'll see either one of those in the next series. Hairston, get ready to boot it. 4.35 remaining. Big second half for LSU. And this one will be taken on the near side by Lovett. He will run it out from the end zone. He's pushed back and taken down at the six-yard line. And uh, losing his helmet on the play is uh, Lamar Lewis. As, uh, uh, got a chance to show his face there as well. Wow. Look at that, Doug. There you go. The Cardinal. The Cardinal are putting it to Lane Kiffin. And that cheer you hear is coming from Knoxville. And less than four minutes remaining in that game as well. So we'll see if Stanford can hang on against the Trojans. I don't know. I'll tell you what. Uh, Tennessee the loyal ball fans or anybody who's playing USC. That's their favorite team. Right. I got you. So Blackman, it's been a long night. An exciting first half where the Vandals were competitive. But since that time, it has been all, and we do mean all LSU. A lot of new faces in there, and we try to name them if we can. Mickey Perry. Johnson out at number 96. Mickey Again, Johnson. there's uh, Daniel. Mickey Johnson right there. Oh. He is a load out of, out of St. Paul's High School in Covington, and he is one of the strongest. He hunkers down. He's about 6'1". I don't know what his weight is, but he's about 6 feet, about 310, 315, and takes on the double teams, and he is impossible to block. Very strong lower body. Second and eight. Parkins, Parkins, Justin Parkins gets the toast. Redshirt freshman out of uh, Moscow, Idaho. Hometown kid there for the Vandals. I love this time. Look at Ronnie Feast right there. He's another linebacker. The, 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 uh, the Tigers signed six freshmen. They're all contributing, and Feast is one of those guys that what a future he has out of West St. John. His nickname is Two. I can't figure that one out, but... Uh, he, uh, what is it? Two. T-W-O. But he yeah. came in in January and, and uh, learned a lot about this defense. Fierce hitter. And he loved the swagger of the LSU defense. That attracted him to the purple and gold. Blackman throws to the far side. Pass is complete as Marquand Major calls that one in. The redshirt freshman. Good look at Mills. He's still in the game as starter. Got to feel good. Come up with another pick and... You know, he's really going to be a special player, a true freshman. And, again, it reminded me, I said it earlier, out of Travis Daniels. Travis Daniels was a guy who played here in the early 2000s. He's gone on seventh year in the NFL. And he just, his style, the way he plays the ball and plays the, the man, uh, very advanced with true freshman as Travis Daniels was when he was here. First and ten for Blackman. Near side, pass is dropped. Mark Vaughn Major in his hands and out of his hands. And that stops the clock with 2.21 to go. All this just academic at this point. 
Just keeping uh, Rene Nato from being able to go home and drink his milk and eat his cookies. <laughs> I might have some here. And Joe Chavis must be uh, quite pleased. His defense has been more than impressive here in this second half. Yeah, he's got to feel good, and he's got to feel good about the young guys who are getting experience. We talked about many of them in secondary, linebackers, been here a long time. The chief, as he's affectionately called, spent so many years in Tennessee, but he can he wants to tell you that how happy he is in Tiger Town, and there's no better place, he said, than LSU, and he's so glad to be here. Parkins gets the carry as the clock continues to run, and we're approaching the two-minute mark here. LSU winning its 40th consecutive non-conference game, setting an NCAA record at the longest, of course, in FBS history. And also tonight, an LSU record with their 20th straight win in Tiger Stadium. There's a good look at uh, Steve Craigthorpe, the quarterback's coach. Frank Wilson with him, the running back's coach. And Craig, uh, Steve Craigthorpe has had so many challenges personally, and he's really done an outstanding job between his, uh, his health issues and his wife and what an uh, outstanding coach he is and individual he is and uh, well, I was just glad to have him. Lightning is still in and the Tigers will get another opportunity to put some more points up. There you see the LSU defense which came in ranked either first or second in every category basically in the SEC and you see how well they rank in the national rankings as well. And uh, tonight's performance will uh, do nothing to not bolster their numbers. Two guys in there right now, Quentin Thomas, number 95, and Justin Macklin, number 54, you see on the screen. Illegal substitution on the defense, 12 men on the field, five yard penalty results in a first down. Wow, oh my. Well, shouldn't have been in the game. And Chief's not happy about that one. Boy, he whoo, whoo. Oh, look at that. And you see Coach Stud right next, Stud to, next him. to him. Right next to him. And boy, he is not happy, and that's... I think he said, get that camera off me, too. Wow. But I, I tell you what, it, that's uh, that's competitor he is. Don't worry about the score. Don't be making foolish mistakes and let up at the end of the game. He is irate. He is very upset right now. He can't wait to talk to that defense. See, it's all quiet right now over there. You'd think, by the look on the coach's faces, it's a reverse score. Just a player two remaining in this football game. Blackman completing that one. As Jari Level makes the grab on that one. Clock stops at 25 seconds. And uh, that'll bring up a second and about five. Clock starts again. And they might not even run another play. Might just let it go. Because, you know, Renee, they have not designed... The 45 point play. <laughs> and that is going to do it. Time runs out in Tiger Stadium as the LSU Tigers push their record to 3 0 with a huge second half. An impressive 63 to 14 victory. Les Miles and Rob Akey meeting at midfield. And uh, as he often does, and all, well, I should say always does offer some words of encouragement to his uh, competition. I tell you, there's a guy right there, Les Miles, who always has something positive to say. So Jakey's going to face uh, Wyoming next week, and we'll see if they'll see if they can take a little revenge on the Cowboys. So this one's in the books, 63-14, to 14, and we'll take a break and come back and wrap this one up. 63-14 the final, back after this network break. <laughs>